beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the hallelujah I want to appreciate everyone for the sacrifice it takes love for God to appear before him every now and then and I know that the Lord will do us good tonight in the name of Jesus Christ before I go on with the teaching tonight I, I just want to challenge us on two things very quickly number one is just to remind us of the fact that um, what is happening in this place is a very prophetic move of God um, but then you never really understand the move of God as a peace you have to look at the broader picture every man's destiny what we call assignment whether for an individual for a church a ministry or for a territory is their contribution i like using that word contribution because it gives us um, a realization that there are other facets a contribution to the big picture god has an idea he's a, he has an agenda we've taught again and again on the agenda of god the book of colossians the first two chapters examine intently the agenda of god it tells us the predeterminate counsel of god hallelujah uh, it's important that we do not allow the frequent activity week after week to get us carried away such that we do not um, realize that god is actually going somewhere with us this is not just an endless pursuit a loyalty to a vision a loyalty to a religious activity that keeps us uh, psychologically healthy that we're in touch with god this is more than that praise the lord it's important that we we understand that this is not just a ministry this is not just a church this is a move of god and that we are through this medium connecting to the bigger picture that which god is doing upon the surface of the earth when you realize this you will come with every sense of seriousness hallelujah the second thing i want to talk very quickly about is to fine-tune our expectations it's important that whenever you come for koinonia generally speaking whenever you go to any ministry any church um, take time to study the operation of god in that area because god works in different ways through different platforms according to many factors 
his predetermined counsel for them their level of alignment to his will the level of permission they have given him in that season to manifest are we together now when god calls a people when god commissions a ministry an assignment there are usually certain graces please pay attention graces anointings and dimensions of the operation of the spirit that is um committed to those people so those who come must be aware that i am coming to a ministry that through grace and through corporate alignment have been able to activate certain dimensions of realities in the spirit and that coming to that ministry can make it possible i was teaching the prayer department on tuesday during their prayer and i was telling them that individuals carry prophetic atmospheres are we together now when you come under the influence of their atmospheres within that period you can tap into the reality that would not have happened with your atmosphere are we together now so when you keep doing that over a long time there is a transference there is an impartation but you see if you don't realize what is obtainable bishop oyedeko will say proximity is not equal to connectivity that you are close to an anointing and an atmosphere does not guarantee that you will contact something tangible so the lord impressed in my heart really to remind us again to let us know the dimension of him that is available in this place please um ladies and gentlemen i want us to understand that this is not some ambition of a man to try to reach people i know that there are pastors who love teaching as a vocation they just love to see sinners saved that's wonderful but um this is not one of those platforms believe me i want you to know that what is happening right now is pivotal to the universal move of the spirit this is not a minor contribution to what god is doing on earth if you if you see it that way you will you will not give your best there's been a lot of prophecy about zaria right from before some of us were born there's been a lot of prophecy about this that is happening right now and in this season so we're not just stumbling into a move of god resident within the north no there is a mystery behind this move of god that is coming in this season and what god is doing and so i want us to understand that we are prophecy being played jesus in the book of luke chapter 4 the bible says reading from verse 16 downward that he took the book the 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 scroll where it was written about him where prophet isaiah wrote about him right and he began to read it the spirit of the lord is upon me and then when he read down he said this day in other words what you see is a manifestation of that when the holy ghost came on the day of pentecost peter told them this is that in other words look you are now seeing the manifestation of something I pray that one day as you study the Bible, you will see koinonia there. That as you study, you will suddenly connect and say, God said this will happen. We are seeing that this is not just a circumstance, but this is prophecy. Hallelujah. I need to tell us this so that our hearts be prepared. It's very, very important. there is nothing listen there is no major move of god that happens without being spoken about i used to see these days years ago in visions i never knew it would be this way glimpses and pictures of this and even the next levels after this and i knew that it was you see these kinds of platforms is called an election of grace it's not about prayer and fasting it's not about just wishing no 
everyone who desires to press into God as we'll be learning can find a place in destiny however there is an election of grace are we together now God always has a move in every territory and every city and it just so happens that by divine predetermination the hand of God can rest upon individuals and he will open them uniquely to certain dimensions of his person and vest them with responsibilities to reveal that dimension within their territory this is one of such things you are saying please value it I want you to value it I want you to value it the days that will come will show you that this is not just an ambition of a man of God you know how pastors say look we are going places and the members say I'll be there with you this is not one of those things it's not just that we are going places you will see how this move fits into prophecy it will happen I've lived my entire life and spent my life like the wise men who kept looking at the stars walking this season never knew that it would be a privilege to be one of those who will frontier dimension of this move but i was more than willing to participate i was desperate i i insisted that the move will not happen in my absence hallelujah so you must you must be very intentional brothers and sisters let me tell you if you are here seated in this place tonight is because there is prophecy upon your life believe that if there was no prophecy upon your life you would not be here I'm not motivating you I am telling you that among all these people there are still some people who this prophecy resonates with that's why God made sure that you have to be here in this season and it's important to pay attention so you don't lose your place the fact that there is an election upon your life does not guarantee that you will manifest it are we together yeah the principle of substitution is that which we see in this in, in scripture again and again that the mandate of a man not just his mantle his entire assignment can be given to another we read about saul in the bible right saul the son of kish a time came he was there seated on the throne but the entire mandate had been given to him. Terah, the father of Abraham. The very assignment of Abraham, Terah was to be the father of nations. But he messed up because of lack of alignment. And the mandate went to Abraham. When Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus Christ, God insisted that there had to be a replacement for him. You see that? So, brothers and sisters, please realize that for every one of us seated here, you are not seated here for your sake. You are seated for the sake of a generation. Listen for their sake. Listen for the sake of your children. Listen for the sake of those who are hungry for God, but may never have access to come to these territories. Listen as a school. Pay attention as though you are being trained for something great i've always given my life and the presence of god and the word of god utmost seriousness you never see me distracted in the house of god and in the presence of god you must please pay attention this is not just a time of worship a worship service it's an impartation there is something happening to you there is growth there is ascendance in the spirit four things i want you to always expect when you come here number one this place is a place of encounter please never forget this it's a place of encounter is the hallmark of this ministry encounters encounters with jesus encounters with the spirit of the living god encounters with the word of god 
and by word of god i don't just mean what you are holding in your hand the scripture that has been explained that has the breath of the spirit upon it capable of producing results in your life encounters whenever you come here you must expect it that something resonates from eternity to your spirit you know that god is in this place through the worship through the testimonies this program was designed intentionally to stimulate encounters from the opening prayers the worship and everything that happens it's, it's intentional i want you to know that it was done with encounters in mind so that whether you are seated inside or outside as you hear the word beyond a man there will be a remarkable encounter visionary encounters yes but that the reality an encounter is an experience that supernaturally communicates the reality of a thing to you it's called an encounter when when i touch this flower for instance my touching it gives me a feel an emotional connection to it that's what an encounter is that by the agency of the holy spirit something happens to you in this place that draws you near that, that nearness of the presence of god is experienced number two whenever you come to this place expect remarkable transformation the lifespan of your spiritual stubbornness when you come here is one day in 24 hours something must start fighting you are we together no matter how hardened you are when you come into this place you can choose to argue but it's like a virus it has caught up with your spirit hallelujah you can pretend eh, there's nothing usual about it but i tell you if you come for just one meeting and you never attend you will never be able to be comfortable with the devil again it's, it's like a cancer it's a see there are mysteries that support the things we do it's not just happening there is a revelation that sponsors this have you seen a man you talk to a man and he pretends as though what you said did not get to him then when he goes back he starts thinking about it and say Kai, but this person cheated me oh that's what happens here so when the word of god comes upon your spirit there is a system that has been designed by grace that it stays it sticks to you and starts fighting everything that is not of God. Hallelujah. Radical transformation. I trust that God will grant us grace that would be able to fetch in the testimonies from the now millions of people, literally without exaggeration, of people that have been blessed just through these teachings. 70% of the people that have been blessed through this ministry have never seen me as a person. There is a mystery to these teachings. The presence of God and its power to change people. I've gone for meetings and seen people talk and I thought I was hearing myself. And I looked at them and they said, Sir, you have never seen me but I have 200 of your messages. I have 250 of your messages. I have your message till last week. That's the power of transformation to change state right so when you come here there is a paradigm shift the messages are so designed not just to whet your appetite spiritually there are lots of messages that stimulate you to desire the spirit more but there are not definite things you hold i teach especially in points because i want your mind to be able to hold on to something when you want to create a paradigm shift the new ideas you are bringing must be clear enough for the people to understand and receive we are replacing old philosophies we are replacing old ideas about god about life and this is happening by the power of the word hallelujah 
mental and intellectual alignment still part of radical transformation one of the things that the Lord taught me as I have worked with the Lord and I have incorporated it even in this ministry is balance everybody say balance I've said it again one of the things that I have um, I have been disturbed about in the body of Christ is the degree of imbalance imbalance can hurt you as much as a lie are, are you following me now imbalance can do you almost the same catastrophe as a lie imbalance and lies is like a man who is inside fire then you bring him out and leave him in a desert it's better than fire but he will still die are we together now so you notice this intentional balancing of spiritual realities as we teach because it is important god will judge me if i mislead you i take advantage of your openness i must commend the loyalty of the people everyone who comes around to this ministry i know you love me i know you love the word of god you believe in what god is doing and there are many of us here who have opened up our hearts that everything that comes from this altar is of god and so i as a person and the leadership generally we owe a responsibility to make sure your convictions are such that can stand the test of time the bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness you can hold on to a wrong philosophy forever you can excel in a dimension of the knowledge of god and fail in another understanding that you understand god in the area of prayer and fasting does not mean you understand other facets of him chances are that if i teach you on the anointing and the holy spirit you will think i'm a remarkable preacher until you hear my perspective on marriage my perspective on marriage can be so imbalanced and faulty but you will leverage on my accuracy are we together now you will leverage on my accuracy in the area of the anointing to mean i know what i'm saying that's the reason why every man of god must be on a consistent passion a passionate pursuit to update his spiritual curriculum as far as the move of god is concerned so you don't mislead people i've heard ministers that i respect their perspectives in different areas but i've heard them communicate other areas and i am shocked to see their degree of ignorance it's like someone who imagine someone who is growing and one hand is growing so well and then one leg is not growing you can imagine that kind i have been obsessed about balance one of my greatest concerns in life is that at the end of my life it will not be that i believe they lie hallelujah and that i've taught that lie to people that have influenced millions of people to believe a lie and they are running with that lie and then i ruin their lives with no opportunity to recall them back brothers and sisters this is why we pray for utterance we don't pray because we are scared of preaching we pray for alignment in the spirit we pray that the things that are communicated that even after 10 years that even when there is need for upgrading it doesn't become that that was a lie and men of god here those who are pastors maybe inside outside i challenge you do not take for granted never trivialize the place of adequate spiritual preparation before you come to the pulpit to preach there are pastors now i'm not against people but there are pastors who sit down cross their leg watch football you know eat and do everything and say ah it's time and they just come and say look where did we even stop last week no don't play with people like that take them seriously the church institution is the most powerful mind control institution in africa it's more powerful than banks it's more powerful than schools you are only in the university or any institution of learning for three four or five years or six years and then you are done but every sunday every wednesday every friday every thursday and some churches every day you are in the church submitting your spirit to the influence of a man 
do you know what it means to sit down and allow a man transfer his ideologies to you that's a risk it's a big risk because our realities are framed by our ideologies so you must be sure that the person you are submitting your spirit and your mind to you will inevitably make decisions based on the parameters he's given you i will not live to mislead people i won't teach you error that's the reason why we labor and at any time i find out that what i've communicated is not accurate i do not have any embarrassment to come back and say look let's realign we have seen something clearer hallelujah is god speaking to us expect transformation you can measure transformation your degree of change your thinking the way you analyze things your comprehension of the workings of the spirit this is part of the indices that we use to measure spiritual maturity you cannot be coming here week in week out whether indoors or outside and then something is not changing about your life you can't be doing the same things saying the same things having the same convictions no the word of god alters your convictions something about you must change something about you must change something about your prayer life must change something about your passion for the word something about your interpretation of the word something about the ideology of god you knew growing up must shift it must be altered are we together now something about the ministry of the holy spirit must change in your life if that is not happening you are not changing you are not changing I detest stagnancy in my life like cancer I detest it I'm obsessed with progress I like to see progress that's why I hate stagnancy anyone who is close to me knows that I'm constantly in a state of transition change you can't be in the same level for a long time intellectually physically When we look at developing nations or underdeveloped nations, part of the hallmark of underdevelopment is stagnancy. There are some of us, there was one stone near your house from the time you were born. That stone is still there. Nobody has had the initiative that why don't we make this road better? It's still there. As a monument that does not motivate anything, only brings pain and regret. You remember they flogged you near that stone. You remember that's where they drove you out of the house nothing to inspire you the word of god should change you that at the end of every koinonia service you should just sit down like this and get up i like it when the word of god enters people and i study the reactions of people to the word not just oh preach preacher that's there's a place for that but that your spirit is is receiving something and you're saying look what am i doing is is God is giving me too much opportunity. I'm wasting grace. I'm making the word of God of non effect. Let the word of God challenge me. He said, The Spirit entered into me, Ezekiel 2, from verse 1 and 2, and set me upon my feet. The Spirit entered. When He spake unto me, He brought an idea that is superior to that which I have known. And it compels change. Change with results immediately. That you can get up and make certain resolutions immediately make certain vows and commitments enter into certain strong personal covenants with god on account of what you have heard the bible says meditate on these things it says give yourself wholly to them it says that you're profiting brothers and sisters ask god how much i pray for you i don't think i pray for you I pray for myself one tenth of the way I pray for you and my prayer is not God give them cars give them houses that's a stupid prayer the prayer is oh God let there be such radical fellowship of the mystery that's what will produce every other thing 
you know what it means to have fellowship with a mystery that you come into oneness with these mysteries you know them you are persuaded about their reality and they begin to produce remarkable results in your life financial prosperity spiritual growth is never a thing of joy to me i don't know about other preachers but i hate being the only one i know it's supposed to be a wise business strategy but i hate being the only one who can produce certain levels of results unlike many preachers it is my joy when i see the grace and the anointing being reproduced in people it gives me great joy so it pains me when after a long time our level of spiritual metamorphosis is slow we must step up this year in the name of jesus christ say amen you see if you don't step up a time will come you will think that what i'm teaching you is a lie because you will be frustrated are we together now you will be frustrated number three the third thing you must expect every time this will even help you to know the kinds of people to invite You must expect revival revival an awakening this is a place a portal in the spirit where people who have been weary spiritually where people who have given up maybe people who used to carry mantles and graces pastors who used to walk with fire churches that used to burn something happened for whatever reason this is the place to come and find restoration that you can say look i don't know what is wrong with me i used to love god i used to be passionate now i don't know what is happening let me go and find out part of the vision god has given us is to make this place a place of refiring a place of revival hallelujah that in in the days of the generals they had places the doors of the churches were open 24 hours there were times it was like they had hosted heaven in that city you didn't even need a pastor if something was wrong with you just go there and lie down we've had a few of those places even in this place many of you do not know some years ago in the campus where it used to be long tennis court there were so much spiritual investments in that place it became an open heavens literally that's when you see people carry their results probation they just go and lie down with rechargeable no prayer they are just saying lord kill me here if if it it, it, it was called a court where matters of destiny were settled a sister who no brother is coming to just goes there and say lord i'm here I'm here for you I'm, I'm here for you and i'm telling you mantles that fell upon people this is a preface to what i'm about to share tonight we must restore mantles back to the church we must restore physical portals on earth where men can run to like cities of refuge it's a terrible thing when your spirit is affected and there's no place like a hospital where you can go and be sure imagine if all the hospitals in nigeria go on strike will give birth on the road people will die in cars the moment somebody has an accident we run and you see the confidence of the doctors you are welcome they don't move with hospitals around they station it in a place and you see all kinds of skills to get to the hospital those who trek those on bike they just want to get there because they know if i arrive i'm i don't even know what is wrong with me i think it's headache but let the doctor speak and when certain doctors try and it fails they refer you to certain people who have labored in this medical field they are called specialists they look at you and they say go and lie down we're operating you something is wrong ah doctor what lie down we have seen many of these kind of cases you are not feeling fine Do we have those kinds of spiritual platforms in the body of christ today every city is supposed to have these provisions 
when a city does not have that provision there is no apostolic authority over their city the hallmark of true apostolic authority is to have a center that represents the place of kingdom activities in a city where the law springs forth and governs the activities of a city please i want you to hear what i'm saying you can know that darkness prevails over a city by finding out whether there are apostolic authorities it's not a name it's not a title it's an office they are the gatekeepers of the happenings of god in that city they communicate in partnership with the prophetic when seasons change and they alert the church. When darkness is about to enter that city, they are the eyes that see and stand on behalf of the city. Stop Koinonia for one month and see what will happen in this city. That's when you will know what we represent in the spirit. Never make a mistake that is just the activity of young people. God's idea is that in every city, there must be apostolic authorities but because of the disalignment of many people those who have called up have, have been called have refused to align god will have to multiply grace and spread the influence of a territory to take care of others while he raises those who will stand there this is the concept of multiplication of grace when people refuse the alignment and the price of the spirit God will have to come to his servant and say this was initially not in your curriculum but to not to frustrate my counsel I know how uneasy it is for you but I will multiply your grace you see that when I multiply your grace I will stretch your boundaries so that your apostolic coverage like a territory will also enter certain dimensions you will know when an apostolic authority has expanded you will see the influence of that ideology see let me tell you the church in nigeria our order of ministry is wrong because the heads of the church in nigeria are pastors i don't mean pastors like kaito it was never that design but there is a sudden restoration if a pastor ever functions and a prophet ever functions and an evangelist ever functions if they do not do this in affiliation with apostolic authorities they will get into error because you see the primary of an assignment of the of the apostolic office is not just teaching it's kingdom governance they administrate the distribution of the realities of the spirit committed to that dispensation and they supervise its safe delivery any true apostle of God that you know is a hard person. The word of God is like fire and it has nothing to do with temperament. The grace will alter you to make sure you deliver at that pace. Even if you are a quiet person. The coming from afar they're coming from afar. Oh, 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 If our parents understood this structure many of them will never be where they are now they are sincere people but they are victims of the disorganization of the church so they had nobody to learn and nobody to challenge who was lying to them are we together the church structure was so designed such that anybody can teach anything and claim his 20 years in ministry when it comes to these matters is by the spirit no it's by the spirit you don't say I'm 120 years old and you are teaching nonsense and misleading God's people. Brothers and sisters, the spiritual protocol has been observed for your progress in the spirit. I want you to know this and take advantage of it. We are not in error as to the strategies that will build you. If you don't build, is a lapse on your own path. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So revival. Oh, may this place remain a place. If you know people who are weary and out, you can just drag them. Somebody tells you, me now, I've done everything you can think about. And you are trying to talk to the person and you just tell the person, I know a place where the river flows from Zion. And I will just come and keep you in that atmosphere. The person may even come late, just like many people outside here. And while they listen, something is happening to them. It's more than the words we speak. There is a spirit communication. If it were words, believe me, you will be tired by now. There is a difference between newness and freshness. Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Mandala Kaparadosh. Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Sing it from your heart to your maker. Will you open up the gates? The gates. Open up the door. In your name, we will rise. I don't lie. You reign on high. Adonai, Adonai, yeah. Adonai, yeah. you ready now? Sing in your name, in your name. Malaka parakos kata brande gadebash. We will rise. Ena na na Maria Moso na na Maria na. Sing Adonai, 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 Adonai. Hey, just the voices. Adonai, Adonai. Bende kalabaso to putia. Our territory will not fail. We will not misrepresent the kingdom. You reign on high. You reign on high. Sing Adonai. Adonai. Na 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 sensitive to what God is doing tonight Adonai you reign on now Adonai Adonai the last thing to expect every time you come for koinonia is a demonstration of the power of God. It's a doom to any territory where there are no instruments that can bring the supernatural to a people. It's a doom to any territory when the sick and the helpless cannot have an alternative. There must be a spiritual center that represents the might of God in a city. There must be a place where men can know that these demons disturbing my life can go. We are unapologetic about stamping the gates of hell within our territory. In the time of John G. Lake, Spokane was said to be the cleanest city. Hallelujah. E.W. Kenyon 
so many people have received his message without carrying his mantle a truck hit somebody in his church pieces the leg he stood in front of it and the leg started shaking and every bone joined back it was not a strange miracle that was the miracle of ushers we have lost so much we are not aware we don't know our spiritual heritage pastors don't research they just get up and preach nonsense nonsense and everybody claims he's doing something i don't say this in a cynical way my heart is pain because there are souls that are lean and hungry nothing current in what the spirit is doing we celebrate these things and we justify growth because we can afford to buy suits and we have a nice car to prove that it is working is that how much we love the body we have lost touch with our spiritual heritage we don't know what happened before we came and we have the audacity to believe that we are custodians of the mysteries of god a custodian of a mystery is also a historian one who meticulously studies the dealings of god how did god move in the 50s how did god move in the 60s how did god move in the 80s when revivals died what happened Have you not read of prophets in the Bible who spent their life searching prophecy? They were just searching the connecting prophecy. And when it was time for them to die, they left the curriculum for whoever would take up. Ministry is full time. Full time. Your entire life is spent guiding the people of God. Ministry is not a vocation where you try to get a job and it doesn't work and you say well so that i don't feel like i've wasted my life i just step into the vineyard that's the motivation a lot of people have so they are there and they are thinking that when i start buying a nice shoe and i can afford suit or something or i have a crowd brothers and sisters it's more than that it's more than that it's more than that this place is a place of healing a place of miracles my goodness the number of text messages i get from people and families that are oppressed is scary and overwhelming overwhelming when banks close for public holiday it affects a territory if they close by thursday people cannot wait for monday monday morning everybody is standing and arguing with their atms no matter how much they have in their account because they they miss the bank for three days i'm teaching tonight on the spirit of revival the spirit of true revival night on night you reign on night revelation chapter 3 in your name we will rise i don't know you reign on mine casting crowns lifting hands bowing hearts is what i've come to do Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing heart is what we've come to do. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. Jesus. See, let me tell you something. By the time Koinonia moves to our next level of life, where we have an auditorium, it services will run every day. Something must be happening spiritually. I, I don't believe in all this coldness then one day people just come around and scramble two hours snoring their destiny and come out and believe they will take no 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 go and ask a herbalist if he goes on vacation 
Ask him if he goes on holiday. We must make the body of Christ an institution. These are the principles of strategic kingdom advancement. When you are tired, that's when somebody is... When you are, you are charged, that's when somebody else is tired. There will always be people. Oh, I look forward to those times. Center for kingdom activities. There's a message playing. There's worship playing. There is a place to flog it out. Activities of angels. That's what will happen. Listen, listen. We are not a social welfare group. We are not, we are not contributing to helping government. No. We are not helping any government. We are enforcing something. That this thing they are doing is nonsense. We are not a part of it. We are loyal citizens, but this is not our ideology. So I'm not, I'm not in partnership with any government doing anything. We are not social welfare. We are bringing the kingdom and its reality into a tent. There are, there are few territories where you go that you, I mean, there should be these kinds of places, these kinds of places all around that you can step in somewhere, right? And just pray and see somebody praying with you. A Christian library, books about generals, where you go and sit down and study. There are DVDs playing, archives, not conferences places to build not branches centers that educate people on what god is doing when we lose touch with history we will die a natural death i'm telling you this hallelujah yeah. your rent has expired nobody is helping you you just know that there is a place where you find comfort you go and see people like you crying to god you are crying 10,000. Somebody is saying 1 million. You say, oh Lord, I find comfort in you. A city of refuge. Do you know why many believers compromise? There is no kingdom community. That community life of the kingdom is not there. There is no place they can retreat to. When they have been wounded and beaten by darkness. When their faith is stretched, there is hardly a place where they can go and find refuge. And you try to create those places and see the gate of hell rise. They will allow you to do any conference you want. But make up your mind to create a physical portal for people. All hell will fight it. And those people will usually be Christians. We owe our generation a debt to preserve the heritage of spiritual things. There has to be somebody in ancient times they usually are these elders and when israel starts messing up moses and all the people will say okay let me remind you because then some of you were not born how by a mighty outstretched arm he brought us out of egypt right he did this and that and the people are listening and at the end of it the people say ah we repent we will serve the lord satan's plot is to destroy people like us so that there there is there are no more there, there will no longer be voices that can connect people and everybody will start doing anything he wants to do called church we, we must re-examine this thing we have been doing called church because it's not producing the required result i'm telling you may it please the lord to feature us again and again in the moves that he is doing and give us an opportunity to create space for him on the earth because he's pressing to find expression when when anna was mocked by penina where did she run to was it closed she knew where to run to right now let me tell you where we run to every other place is closed only the herbal home the man says i'm, I'm here any day any time just come with your goat and you see a Christian dragging a he goat to a, a herbal home and we have the mouth to criticize them. We have the mouth to call everybody fake. There are pastors who call everybody aside from them fake. Right? Ask them what contribution they are bringing in building the body. Let me tell you, if I'm sick, if I were not born again and I'm sick and dying, I will go to any herbalist 
I don't care anybody that is talking to me. Are you hear what I'm saying? I will not do it in the secret. I will do it openly. How many people have died in the church who should not die? Because they will not come and be healed and be delivered because of loyalty to an ideology that somebody told them. There are people who are sick today. They are dying. Some of them will come and ring my phone and disturb me to come and meet me in the night. They will criticize me in the day and call in the night. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou spirit of the deep, and weep, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. You are mighty in this place. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Break forth. Thou fountains of the deep and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. Break forth, thou spirit of the deep and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. God must find a place in this city and in this region that can host the full dimension of what he seeks to do we must pay the price of alignment in the spirit for god to find the people listen don't let anybody make you look like a fool for being serious with god what are you doing? I'm a pastor. No, no, no. What are you doing for a living? Look at that stupid statement. As though being a man of God is a call to... They just look at you as if you, you have your whole life as wasted. Shame on our degree of backsliding. Believe me. I have come with a mantle of revival tonight. My heart pains me when I see this thing. As I travel around regions, I know that men of God are doing their best. But I'm telling you, there's got to be true apostolic voices. It's not a title. It's not a name. It's an election of grace. When will the sick know that they can find a place of refuge? There are people who have come right now. Do you think it's my joy when I see people queuing up, standing? Some wanting to be healed, wanting to be blessed. I can hardly attend to one tenth of people. It is never my intention to be a superstar. The problem is there is a price. It's not a gift. We have been deceived that it's a gift. Let me tell you. I may not boast of knowing so much principles about finances. I may not boast of knowing so much intellectually. But brothers and sisters, when it comes to the presence of God and the mysteries of the kingdom, it's an office. It's not a, it's not a title. It's an office. Paul says, how that by revelation it was revealed to me, this mystery, this mystery, it will usually take us a long time to realize the kinds of vessels and the graces that God puts before us. There's too much backsliding in the body of Christ. We don't even know where the reference is again. No reference. Anybody comes up with his idea of what he calls spiritual growth. No reference. You pray a little. People are looking. They are feeling offended for your prayer life. Because they are hoping you backslide. So that it will, it will, it will make them comfortable. 
your, your fire is frustrating them because they don't want to grow. And seeing you increase is frustrating them. Recycling of revelations in the body of Christ because men cannot stay in the secret to pray the price and bring something fresh. Things are happening over territories. We pastors are moving around with deaf ears, no seeing eyes, no hearing ear. Please, we are going to pray just for one minute before I continue. Are we together? You are going to say, Lord, revive my life. Revive my life. Please pray. Inside and outside, pray. Revive my life. This can't be it. God is so much bigger than this. This can't be it. My God is so much bigger than this. Yeah, this can't be it. God is so much bigger than this. This can't be it. Oh, don't deceive yourself. You know what the standard is in the spirit. You are bigger than this. Yeah, this can't be it. My God is so much bigger than this. Calling us deeper, 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 deeper. He's calling us deeper, deeper, deeper. Please sit down, sit down. sit down a revival is a season of reawakening a season of reawakening from a state of dormancy a reawakening A season of reawakening from a state of dormancy in the life of a people and a territory. A season of reawakening from a state of dormancy, spiritual inertia, inactivity in the life of a people and a territory usually brought about by an outpouring of the spirit a season of reawakening in the life of individuals and corporately across a territory usually brought about by an outpouring of the spirit a true revival is a situation where there is an outpouring of the spirit first in the life of individuals and then corporately across a territory and it brings a reawakening an awareness i'm going to be very fast because i want us to pray how do i know that a territory please help me how do i know that a territory is under the influence of a revival thank you there are certain parameters number one the first sign that a territory is under a revival is restoration of love and passion for god corporately 
not just individually there is a restoration of god consciousness in that territory when there is a territory where there are people who drink anyhow smoke anyhow live anyhow do anything they want to do when they want to do it it may not be their fault but the spiritual envoys in that territory are to be blamed increase god consciousness there have been times through history when the anointing of the spirit will fall on individuals and a territory even those who are not born again will be forced to have that consciousness of god when they look at you today and they say where is your phone imagine someone who you ask him um what's your number and he said number that's strange right you look at the person have you been existing in that this our generation imagine a pastor comes to preach and he carries a big um flat screen size computer and then comes to drop it you know something is wrong right because there's a better technology than that that's what happens in a revival people are forced to talk about the move of god the newspapers are forced to carry something do you know that in the days of the generals right the newspapers hardly discussed politics it was in a critical way but they were always talking now we are so idle the newspapers know if they write about us they will not sell so they rather talk about somebody who imported chicken from somewhere and they caught him because people will buy it the moment they say a man of god moves in their not because they're all these stupid people they have come again look at how much of a nuisance we have become to society they are irritated when they see our faces upon papers in the times of evan roberts people would lay hands on the magazine just lay hands on the newspaper and the spirit of revival will take over. people will start falling under the anointing repenting by themselves having visions of jesus restoration of love and passion for god don't let my love grow cold i'm crying out Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. Listen, let me tell you how the spirit of the Antichrist works in a territory. The first thing that happens is Satan usually uses the last revival to stop the next one. Are you seeing that now so the man of god who god did business with in the last revival usually what happens is that because of what is happening there is what we call premature satisfaction little result oh apostle joshua selman you are the talk of the town the, satan takes advantage of that because he knows we like it we like names we like titles we like accolades oh here comes the man of god the one who raises the dead and, and and heals the sick and we we pride ourselves to our detriment we love honor there is an obsession about it we can do anything for it including backsliding so what happens is that people keep watching the devil keeps watching this thing your prayerlessness starts increasing your wordlessness starts increasing but he will never strike he will allow you and then he will throw all kinds of persecutions get my teaching why revivals die you know all those kinds of things together when that person is watered down god no longer has a voice listen there is a difference between god speaking to you in your secret place and god speaking to a territory god has his mouthpieces everywhere And then compromises begin to come in. What you would have talked about, you no longer talk about. Let me tell you how Satan destroys great men. He makes us victims of our messages. If Satan knows that God has anointed me to liberate people in an area, he will do everything within his power 
to make me a victim of those areas the reason is because when that happens you no longer will have the confidence to preach with might are you seeing why you need discipline love for god love for god your passion your obsession about god when you love god there are indices there must be a restoration of that love some of you sitting down looking at me you know how you were with god tell yourself the truth ah don't let my love grow cold i'm crying out like the fire again i need your discipline i'm crying out like the fire again you see if you love god because of husband the day the husband comes there's no more pursuit to love god you see why we look you know i teach you a balanced teaching here when you tie your love for god to things as a bride you are in for a shock i can love god because of anointing i hope you know that and that anointing can lead me to go and fast because i want power the day the power comes and i can have one or two results i now know that the anointing has come are we together now so no matter what i you don't know my secret place is it not when i come out here it's only god that knows whether i'm serious over what i'm saying or not you cannot ordinarily tell whether a man of god is serious with god or not because you see god is so merciful he will always confirm his word in the midst of the people and it usually is a justification to men of god to mean they are intact be careful that god is still using you and the power of god is still flowing does not mean that he's accrediting everything you are doing you must go back to the secret place for editing and fine-tuning love for god i am shocked to see how fast people lose their love for god lord if you do this for me i will come and testify and then the other part of the story we don't say it out but it's in our heart if you don't do it i will hate you so it doesn't seem to happen oh god no husband again am i the worst sinner on earth and, and you hear all those kinds of statements how can you tie your love for god for these kinds of things success can distract men please hear this there are many teachings on success that i'll bring this year but let me tell you success can distract more than failure in fact failure gives you focus because your ego is already strong but success can distract whenever you begin to see your candle rise brothers and sisters that's when to catch god that's not when to leave him and say everybody behold the celebrity you will die like a chicken when satan wants to throw you he allows you to rise high enough for everybody to see you he throws you in a way that threatens everybody so they don't try to rise like you again because the memory of your fall stops them from pressing it are you getting what i'm saying that's why certain people will not be serious with god and the devil will not touch them until they rise high before everybody and then something will happen and crash them down love for god this night we are addressing our love for god lovest thou me more than this one of the first indices of a true revival we can look at zaria as a city and samaru as a region and know whether the spirit of revival is in this city we can look at abu as a campus and know whether our love for god has diminished when somebody let me not go ahead of myself number two marks characteristics of a true revival number two the outpouring of the true spirit of holiness over a territory an outpouring brothers and sisters may god never make our territories without men who can speak the truth are you hearing what i'm saying the devil is out to frustrate men of god and water down people who can speak the truth please let me tell you something brothers and sisters if you are a christian many things must change in your life your lifestyle must change your conversation must change not by the energy of the flesh there is an alignment your job is to do that alignment if you do it well the transformation must happen there's too much nonsense and carelessness in the body of christ 
to a point that somebody will have to say i'm a christian for it oh you're a christian so you're a brother in the faith that's a serious issue are we here you you see a christian sit somewhere and he's talking my goodness you are embarrassed until you start talking about koinonia for instance and say ah koinonia you know apostle ah, you don't need to see me say so you mean you are there in antioch it was unbelievers who called people who were a reproduction of christ they called them christians who is calling you a christian can those who hate you say i hate this person no but i know he's a christian can't be drinking and smoking and say it's just my body that is drinking my spirit is okay you are not all right please let's let's end this you are not all right let me tell you the truth no you are not all right you are watching porn see you see let me tell you something i'm not condemning you don't get me wrong the difference between a christian and an unbeliever is the presence of the convicting power of the spirit when when you are sinning unconvicted you are not in christ are you getting what i'm saying now yeah if by the work of the flesh somebody falls into a habit you went to your friends they reminded you of Gulda that you used to take you don't know what happened you gave into the flesh that conviction is a sign that you are in christ that you can return and the Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. It says, and the truth is not in us. It said, but if we confess our sins, not assume they are not there. If we confess our sins, not assume they are not there. It says, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Have you turned that out of your Bible? Because it's supposed to be there. The true spirit of holiness. Please. I speak especially to the young people all of us who are young people in this region let's not make it look like being a young person is a stupid thing are we together some people were discussing me somewhere and uh, I got to hear of course one of the ladies said, ah, this person you mean there are all these beautiful girls in Koinonia how is he doing let me tell you how I'm doing I'm very fine very fine very fine healthy in the spirit very fine i intend to continue with god for a long time i decided that from the start of the journey we are afraid of the responsibility that firm decision brings because we know it will have to force us we still want to enjoy some things you see that because if you make a firm decision you too you know you know a firm decision means deleting that person's phone number but you don't want to so you are not serious that's the meaning it's as simple as that because you leave jesus i leave i have no fear of what tomorrow brings because you leave jesus I live today. I live to pray. A true spirit of revival that you can see somebody kept his money and leave it there. When the old man wants to touch it, he reminds you that it has been nailed to the cross. And you mind your business and leave that money there. Even though you needed money to eat. The spirit of holiness. Let me tell you. If we allow the spirit of holiness to leave our territory, we will never experience the fullness of God. We will not see miracles and signs and wonders. Please, let's not mock God. I know what I'm saying is hard, but you too, you know I'm not lying. You know I'm not lying. Don't let the spirit of holiness just run out of your life. And the key to unholiness is carelessness. Bros, you did. There's one party we're having. He said, yeah, but I don't drink again. They just come, Jerry. Carelessness. Lot settled near Sodom. Lot settled near Sodom. Lot settled near Sodom. You take advantage of the grace of God and produce a life that is worthy. 
please don't feel condemned i speak to all of us here those who are here and those who are following us the goal is not to condemn you but the goal is to create conviction by the power of the holy spirit holiness and power go hand in hand don't ever deceive yourself that you can compromise on holiness and experience the power of god you can kneel down with offering and lift it to a man of god there has to be true holiness there has to be true holiness i'd like you to lay hands on your head in one minute and pray and say lord restore to my life the spirit of holiness go ahead and pray please pray especially if you know you are affected by what i'm saying please pray this is a threshing floor it's a family please lay your hands and say lord i've been pretending as if this is not an issue but tonight you have brought your word out of love not to condemn me but to remind me that you are still waiting i receive a baptism of the spirit of holiness those outside please make sure you are laying your hand oh i separate myself by grace from the works of the flesh the impulses of the flesh the appetites of the flesh the appetite the lust and the carnality that destroy great men lord i'm going far the spirit of holiness must come upon my life it must come upon my life i receive a restoration lord i used to have it but something happened i gave in to women i gave in to men i gave in to drinking i gave in to wrong relationships i was lonely and i allowed i i frustrated the manifestation but tonight oh god in this place i receive grace 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 it's not by the strength of the flesh you can't resist evil by the strength of the flesh remember the cross the place where grace comes from your old man has been nailed therefore mortify your body Take advantage of that grace. Let it become an instrument of righteousness. Please pray. It's a year of multiplied grace and influence. God is not a native doctor. Godliness. True holiness. That's why many of our fathers have lost touch with spiritual reality. help us oh God that in lifestyle in character in conversation that everything about your life there is a presence of holiness you will carry on your job in school in your atmosphere not by condemning others not by reading people off that's the flesh you won't glorify God that way but that you carry a compelling presence hallelujah before we continue pray again say Lord I overcome carelessness in my life some of us are already at the verge God is bringing this as a prophetic message because some of us are already dwindling visiting the guy carelessly doing all kinds of things carelessly you are a christian god is bringing this message to salvage you get back to order get back to order get back to order get back to order the true spirit of holiness no you can't start accepting bribe not at this level of your life you used to hate it before don't all of a sudden love bribe you are a Christian and a Christian indeed. The spirit of God in you and the righteousness of God compels you to hate immorality not out of fear but because of your love for God and your desire to be used by him. Make sure it doesn't leave. That's a fire you must not allow to die. Aside from immorality and the rest, what of vain glory? What of self-seeking? What of vanity ambitions that are not consistent with christ please pray this is a threshing floor tonight those of us outside make sure you are praying 
if nobody has told you there is a problem with your life i'm telling you there is if you are giving room to the flesh i don't care what excuse you bring god does not condemn but he does not condone evil many of us have been praying lord i want you to use me i want to see your power i'm showing you the secret it overrides fasting and prayer hallelujah let's hurry up number three the third sign to know that there is a true revival in a place the third sign is massive salvation of souls genuine salvation genuine salvation genuine salvation it's not enough for people to come and be saved they must be saved well well to stay well and grow massive salvation that is engineered by those who are custodians of that revival listen if there is no true passion for souls in your heart something is wrong let me prove to you that it's unnatural. How many of you have seen a scene where there is an accident? Nobody asks who is a Christian there or who is a Muslim. Everybody rushes because they want to save them from dying. Every time you see sinners, I want you to imagine an accident scene. Imagine a fatal accident. What would you do? There are some of us, we have roommates, we have people in our workplaces. Is until maybe three months to leave Zaria that they stumble across Koinonia and they come and find you there and you see them crying and say this is what you have been enjoying say I'm too fine how can I tell this guy to come how can I lead him to Christ massive salvation so, so. by the way the Lord while I was preparing this the Lord gave me an instruction i'll say during the announcement but then let me say it again by god's grace next friday's miracle service you're coming with two sets of requests the first is the names of your family members and loved ones those who you have tried to get them born again come and watch god will do for them this year you will watch what god will do he will surprise you i, I will I, please you are permitted to write a full scrap sheet of names if you have it write it down right no matter i don't care who they are don't you let the devil tell you god cannot save any man if he saved you he can save any man even pharaoh although he didn't repent but he acknowledged that there was god ne ne nebuchadnezzar acknowledged god turned him into an animal leave the how to god god knows where to touch them and force them to come to christ when saul landed on the floor he knew that this was god See, God knows where to touch the arrogance of any man. Are we together? So you're going to bring one prayer request, your normal prayer request and that of your loved ones, but please, write it down. Not names of enemies, and that's not what I'm asking you. Names of sinners, sinners, people who you know you are agreeing with God. Let me tell you one key to seeing the hand of God on your life. Be passionate about where his heart is. Are we together? if i'm a millionaire and you want to get my attention won't you look for what interests me and also be passionate because that would be the meeting point are we together we want to call god's attention but we are not facing where his heart is facing it's not enough to pray and fast you must be serious about sinners there are some of us when we make altar calls here you now look at time and say okay, let's hurry up to you it's not a big deal you've forgotten that he saved you You've forgotten that that person he's saving now may be the first in a family of 10 to be born again. I remember one of our ladies who years ago, they were all unbelievers, you know, non-Christians now, I mean. And God, I mean, saved her. She became saved, I think, while on campus. And we kept praying like this in the initial days when we used to start our meetings. God touched her brother. I think God touched her mother. Three of them were all saved, remaining the father. The father was a hardened. He wasn't somebody who was near the kingdom. We told her, keep praying. Don't say God will not touch them. 
keep praying one day she received a call he was saved in living faith when he was saved i was told reliably that they took money at the back of the boot of a car is i don't know it's like his family members they drove down and say which depression are you in that would have made you to become a christian ah you will see salvations that will scare you the day you go and look at somebody in your family you will think it's a mistake you just say, you say what are you doing say i'm praying in tongues say are you joking say I, i'm a sanctuary keeper I'm, I'm i've i've left the world since I used to have a bad colleague years ago. One time, I heard that he was a pastor in Salem ministry. I said, it's a lie. So one day, he called me. And we were talking. We just spoke. And he said, I said, tell me it's a joke. Tell me it's a joke. These guys were the fence jumpers. These guys were the ones they carry in the gutter in the morning. And now he has been changed. Please don't conclude on any man. Don't conclude on any man. That roommate you are seeing, you know every Friday she's not around till Monday morning. Wait and see what God does with her. The reason why we don't evangelize is because we don't believe God can touch people. There's nobody on earth today that God cannot save. There is hope for the living. There is hope for the living. Is God helping us? Please, we are going to see massive salvation. Make sure you don't allow people without. You can give them koinonia messages. You can pray for them. If you don't have the courage, drag them and bring them to koinonia. Just like many people, as I'm talking now, there are many people who will respond to the altar call right now. They came because they were invited. When you love souls, you can pay for them to come. If 50 naira is too much for you to pay transport for someone to come and get born again, don't say you love God. Don't say you love God. When a guy loves a lady, he can have 5,000 in his account. He will withdraw it. Leave the minimum balance. And tell her eat. She say, I don't want to stress your body. They say, no, no, no. Those eat. It's me that is paying for this thing. But when it comes to souls, we are afraid. We are, someone is telling you, I, I would love God, but he's giving flimsy excuses. Why don't you tell the person, two of us, let's climb bike and come. Are you that passionate and unembarrassed? Do that and see the way God wipes your tears. See, these are kingdom keys. There are no shortcuts to this thing. Souls. When I pray many times, I say, Oh God, use Koinonia as a platform to save sinners. You see my heart when we make altar calls and people are coming. I tell you, give them chance to come. I remember somebody... Uh, I, I, I don't know exactly I think he was he's, he's an imam or something one of these, these uh, very strong guys he was seated outside when I was teaching the reality of heaven and hell this was somebody who is learned you understand what I'm saying and he sat down outside and was thinking and while I was teaching he saw a vision of Jesus outside and he got born again the day he came for counseling I could not believe it ushers I think one or two people there's one of our brothers in ushers too who was like that now totally transformed, serving the Lord, working in the ocean department. Who told you God cannot save them? Your stubborn father, your stubborn mother, your missing brother who comes back once in three months. I'm telling you when the power of God lands on them. We don't know the power that raised Christ from the dead. That's why. Because all we are teaching about in church is money. We don't know the power. If a power can raise a dead body, is it to transform one who is alive that it will not change Number four. Let's run. The fourth mark or characteristic of a true revival is passion for the house of God. Now, please hear me. I say this sincerely from the depth of my heart. And I, I mean no condemnation with this. But when as men of God we celebrate small ministries and small churches to mean no, I'm like that. Me, God gave me this. I don't believe in that concept. I know that crowd is not the ultimate determinant as to whether God is there. But brothers and sisters, people must be saved. And they must have passion for the house of God. Because that's when they are taught the precepts of the kingdom. The church is God's portal to reveal the mysteries of the kingdom. 
it's not enough for people to be born again that's why we co we collect their details we send them text messages and follow them up what's wrong with getting people born again and get their numbers once in a while you send them a scripture maybe the person is about to go back to alcohol and ah, the text comes and you say maybe it's a scripture love not the world looks at your phone looks at that bottle and he knows and the spirit of god you have given him access to kick in and he drops it never to pick it again there's no support structure in the body of christ to help sinners stand once they are born again we say okay now just find your way back to your seat and the lord help you that's why when people get born again we recommend to them because the ministry is still growing we don't have all the avenues to do all the things we want to do right we recommend them to go to the prayer department at least for one month even if they don't intend to be members just to join that's the only other large platform we have to minister to the people that's why pray for us pray for this ministry that god will take us to the next level fast and you will see the things that are in store for the body of christ passion for the house of god when coming to the house of god hear me let me use koinonia this is our platform when coming to koinonia suddenly becomes an endurance please i want you to know that something is already wrong with your spiritual life are we together now yeah you just sit down and say kai this thing self to six i will even sit down outside it's like it's cold i be those things are indices it's a reaction to something already happening in your spirit i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord the the scripture the anchor scripture that the lord gave us remember the scripture it says the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted and all nations shall flow they will say to themselves come let us go to the house of the lord to the mount of god for there he will teach us his ways he said for out of zion shall proceed the lord passion passion there are people you see them january koinonia and then later on maybe when result is out or something it just coincides with a miracle service they now drag themselves and come and sit outside and of all the prophecies that are coming they are just waiting for when they talk about academics the moment they say for your academics they now they are now invited immediately they finish they run that game you are playing with god you will not win Praise the Lord. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Any ministry that is truly committed in soul winning will not be small what we are doing in the church is sheep stealing what did i call it sheep stealing when you steal a sheep a sheep is not a fool it grew somewhere eventually ah you see i am the good shepherd my sheep here know my voice and we, we steal sheep we are we are trying to steal choices quality sheep. so if sam please stand up sam if sam is a millionaire i want that kind of sheep around because i know the relevance of the sheep to that pastor or that place that attitude every time we see unbelievers you see somebody with his draggy jeans you know this guy you even need to support him back we don't like those kind of souls the person calls you daddy say who is your i'm not your father i don't know you i just got you born again please look for somebody else these are the kinds of, ah, this is my son you are, i'm well pleased that carnal attitude are you getting what i'm saying so when if that's why i say it to the glory of god and you know here i know no man after the flesh i will not go to anybody's house and say um you are a senator uh, your daughter is a member in our ministry we, we have we, we want to buy bus god will use people there is nobody that i will reject on grounds of anything whether your father is a carpenter or a pilot it doesn't matter hallelujah we don't love the sheep and they know they know when, they know the type of sheep we love when you see a beautiful lady say you are you are my daughter daughter how are you 
and you keep stressing that lady even when she leaves your ministry she's wondering what do you like me or the beauty see members are not idiots they know pastors who are serious they know they know pastors who are playing games you just gather phone numbers of very pretty ladies these are this is what we do that destroy us are we together now or we gather the number of people who are rich and all of that and oh no, there is a place for honor don't get me wrong what i'm saying this thing we are doing is too much is sheep stealing how many of us are willing to labor on sinners until they become true saints the bible says the kingdom of god is like a, a remember the story of a shepherd right 99 sheep one got missing what did he do to the 99 they were all right so he left them and went still not minding if he loses the 99 went to look for that one is that our attitude when somebody comes to stand you are looking whether he's holding an envelope if it's not you look at his shoe look at his watch and say let's pray father help this person and you are praying don't waste my time here but when somebody comes package you are like what are they what let me let me know the needs if you're a pastor here please do this thing truly god is going to judge us not in a condemning way we are going to be accountable for this act as if there is an authority above you members know let me tell you there is no member who will see a man of god talking like i'm talking who will not love him and be open to him do you know why many of our members in different churches i'm speaking apostolically there are many people listening do you know why many members they know their pastors don't like them they know it they can't truly call this person my pastor my father somebody i can come and talk to because they know that the pastors want money they want what will make them proud by god's grace we don't destroy our wounded soldiers here no matter what you have done we we'll enter the hole with you and come out together a good shepherd doesn't stand on his sheep and leaves a trophy he lays down his life for his sheep passion for the house of god number five quickly passion for the word indices that measure a revival in a place passion for the word passion for prayer passion for a life of worship you can know whether a territory is under the influence of the spirit of revival by how much people hunger for the word jordan bookstore is there he will tell you i know that people love the word in this place I'm even careful to announce certain books because you announce it by tomorrow there are people who are already there getting books studying buying concordance truly let me tell you i'm shocked at people's low level of passion for the word of god when i started out with god sometimes you will come and see different kinds of bibles our money was spent buying bible not just to look for rema we didn't have the privilege to learn greek and hebrew so you listen we buy bible on tape bombard it put it in your ears i had one rechargeable there all kinds of songs all kinds of songs in the night you play it but right now what do we do with our money we don't do anything for the kingdom you buy one small bible that looks like a phone you just carry you cannot even see what is there and you don't care because you don't read it you don't read it obviously you don't read it please let's take this thing of god seriously when do you close yourself and study not just devotional where you read fast as you are praying you're on your way going oh i see this uh, god and then scripture for reading luke chapter this rejoice in the lord always again i say rejoice amen you just drop it and run ask the person what he's running towards he will tell you he's looking for money or a meaningful life and we have left the word of life I found your word and I did eat them. And they were a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. Passion for the world. Passion for worship. Many of us don't worship. We pray and we study the word. There is a place for worship in your spiritual growth. If you don't have worship tapes. Now, technology has made it easy. Put these things. I have a selection in my phone. I call them deep worship. There's one called encounter. 
that one when when i'm high in the spirit i just switch not all songs minister to me at the same level i have studied what the anointing does and the songs that help them has it happened to you like that yeah you put the songs don't just say christian songs and then uh, uh, motivational songs no 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 separate this thing and take god seriously you have a selection the moment you just hear a christian one there is another one diluting your spirit and then midway after you enjoy it small just to satisfy the guilt you now quickly run to don Muen. don't please saints of god i admonish you in the name of jesus christ guard your heart with all diligence your destiny depends on it you will never find one on christian song in my phone i'm not one of those people who say look we need to work with technology i'm not a fool technology has failed us many things governments have failed us it's obvious they are ignorant we used to say it before but there was no room to expose it right now it's clear that the government of nations are clueless come to the kingdom and learn the ways of god the years to come will show the excellency of the wisdom of the spirit we are like the virgins that are taking extra oil now a time will come when those who had that oil they will not have anything again satan does not give anything free have you not learned a day will come the day he meets all the people celebrating him they will pay with their life satan never gives you a thing free he will give you you will think he's dash but his business he will come in the future for everything anybody that serves the devil knows that it's a fraternity unto death the end is death Create an atmosphere of worship. Create an atmosphere of the word. Get Bible. I have, I have a, a very beautiful software that I got. Just the words of Jesus. They just pick them through the gospels. Just everywhere Jesus spoke. Just the words of Jesus. Always beautiful. With worship playing in the background like this. I tell you, you will wash your spirit. You know how you When you listen, you will know you are getting clean through the word. The word cleanses. Cleanses your mind sometimes i sleep and let it keep playing and i have visions and encounters you wake up shaking under the presence of god you create an atmosphere that cannot be denied this is how it happens what if i have roommates that are not serious that's why you have a phone you cry to god for a good phone he gave it to you use it well use it well not just for sending text messages use it well how much does it take to download? I mean, there are Android devices with one, two thousand naira. Don't say I cannot afford it. Your hair, your shoulder, your knees, your toes. Look at all you have used your money that God gave you for building your spirit to just build your body alone. Remember, your spirit is better than your body. Invest in it first. Number. Let's hurry up. We're almost done. when there is a true revival in a place there is an outburst of financial miracles and sociological advancement listen revival affects the quality of the living of the people with india don't think when you subscribe to the things of god and a revival comes um, it means that other areas of your life will suffer no when there is a real revival the quality of the life of god's people is improved almost every major technological advancement is connected to a revival it's just that the historians remove the god factor out and make it look like somebody just discovered something a lot of the people who made strange discoveries they did them coinciding with periods of revival and most of those people were either christians or came from christian families when the spirit of revival is upon you you will be rich you will be blessed because the presence of God will compel favor upon your life. When a ministry is under that kind of open heavens, they will enjoy supplies. People will do well. People will get jobs. There will be marriages. There will be blessings. There will be children. There will be all kinds of breakthroughs. Don't make it look as if when you seek God, you will be in trouble. No. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 33 tells us. He said, and his righteousness, if you do that properly, he says, all other things shall be added to you as well amen seven when there is the true spirit of revival in a place there is an outburst of miracles signs and wonders oh this is very important 
There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. Miracles. I believe in miracles. Believe me. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in miracles. I believe the sick can be healed. I believe God can step into people's lives and change their stories. We've seen all kinds of testimonies in this place. That's what is going to happen to many of you this night. Koinonia remains a place of healing, a place of miracles. Because of people's inability to contend for the true healing power. They say, look, um, um, healing. When they say healing, they are quick. You say, no, no, no. Emotional healing, please. Physical healing. People are sick. Their bodies are sick. Are we together now? Yes, there's a place for emotional healing. But we usually say those things because there's no physical index to prove whether they are healed or not. If somebody is blind and is healed, he is healed. Is that not true? We must contend for grace even in this dimension say amen and may it happen through your hands there is a joy when god uses you there is a joy when god does things around you but when it happens through your hands it's a blessing i trust that god will use us to begin to lay hands on the sick and speak to people that they note you and say ah i i came to amaka and she prayed with me and doors just opened great testimony Ella agreed with me. She prophesied something over my life. Oh, I met Aaron crying on something and he spoke over my life. Some of us are so backward in the area of the miraculous. Even if somebody said you prayed with me and something happened, say no, it's because you came for Koinonia. You must believe God in your life. Hallelujah. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Any pastor in this day and age. Who is not serious about the miraculous should be prepared for empty pews i guarantee you any pastor who is not ready for the demonstration of the miraculous people are not looking if they are looking for where to watch film there's silver bed there are many there's cinema and all kinds of places people don't come to church to watch movies they come to church because they have real problems is that not true they need the power of god head on in their lives lastly the final index that shows that an atmosphere is under the influence of revival is impartation of gifts graces and mantles impartations see revivals are times where god recruits people into his army most people stepped into the call of god upon their life at revivals when people are just praying non-stop for a while the holy ghost separate me paul and barnabas there has to be release of mantles graces impartations it happens during revivals there will be almost no impartations when revival is not in a place remember a man in the bible called agabus he had daughters and all of them were prophets there are few people who have carried those kinds of mantles that can come from father to children god knows my children god knows before they arrive there will be a special recording waiting for them as soon as they arrive straight on before the nonsense that society brings this and that you are stupid you are foolish no. they will receive something they will start having visions and encounters of jesus that's why i respect and i want us to appreciate them i respect every parent in this place who come with their babies and their children let them sleep and sleep in the presence of god it was in the presence of god samuel was sleeping when he had the voice of god even if you must sleep do it in the presence of god because although your body is sleeping your spirit is receiving impartations of mantles and graces that's what is happening to some of you some of you in the nearest future god will send you to territories and you'll be the ones doing this thing i'm doing right now when you stand 
one day you will just stop in the middle of the congregation and tears will come down and you will tell them once upon a time i sat down quietly i remember when i used to go for meetings and sit down and i hear the man of god say out of this place god will raise great men and people are shouting amen some are sleeping some are playing some are not serious and i just sit down there and i say really i could imagine the angels and all these people saying young man pay attention there are destinies tied to you very quickly what is the price what is the requirement for revival and we're going to pray I'll just give you four of them quickly and then we're done sorry I may not have time to read the scriptures is God blessing you tonight the first price requirement for true revival not assumed revival true revival is consecration the first prize you want to host the glory of God the first requirement is consecration media help us with one scripture that I found very interesting Isaiah 52 verse 11 I'll, I'll just read the other ones while they pull up that one for us 2 Timothy 2 verse 19 to 21 says nevertheless the foundation of the Lord standeth sure it says having this seal the Lord knoweth them that are his he says, and let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Iniquity is not just sin, fornication and the rest. No, it's a state of your heart that produces those workings of the flesh. Let's read this scripture together. One, two, read. Depart ye, depart ye. Go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. It says, go ye out from the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord those that host precious things from God he says depart depart ye consecration consecration very very important set apart for his service set apart the Bible says there is no man who warreth and tangles himself we want to be civilians and soldiers at the same time. It doesn't happen. No. Nicodemus says, how can, how can a man be born for a second time? Can he enter back into his mother's womb? And then verse 5, he opens up, up to another dimension. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man, listen, be born of what? Water and the spirit then he says he cannot enter so he talks of seeing the kingdom an awareness of the possibilities that are there you know that there is a provision in the dealings of God with men for the sick to be healed there is a provision in the dealings of God with men where men are immune from the ability of sicknesses to touch them there is a provision where we are lifted above the grip of 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 demons and devils but it's one thing to have that awareness listen believers but it's another thing to understand the systems and the mysteries that were attached to be able to cause us to walk in the experience of that outcome so we we hold several scriptures that we cannot defend with our lives there is a possibility for restoration but what is the key that is attached i am passionate about revealing to believers the mysteries that are responsible for causing spiritual realities to become their experience just like shortly we're going to be celebrating the victory miracles upon miracles but the issue is not just an anointed man the issue is that underlying these miracles and testimonies and the manifestations of the grace and the power of god are vessels that have aligned themselves through understanding you see most of us um the theology about faith listen carefully the theology about faith that is being communicated as powerful as it is may limit us from walking in the experience of the power the grace and the revelation of all that is contained in god faith is not just believing unseen things um they don't have to be unseen faith 
is not just believing on seeing things so that they will manifest that's a dimension of it but faith listen true bible faith the foundation for true bible faith starts with an encounter an encounter without an encounter you will not have true bible faith an encounter is not a vision an encounter is an experience that is initiated by the holy spirit that causes a spiritual truth a reality the reality of a scripture to be crystallized in your heart the end of an encounter is conviction the end of an encounter is conviction You'll never be able to walk in a dimension where you are guessing and hoping and wondering. No, sir. Encounters are necessary for believers. That's why the Holy Spirit was given to us. The spirit of truth. Are we together now? So he introduces encounters in our lives. You can read the Bible and quote a scripture. It doesn't mean you've had an encounter with that scripture. You may even learn it and know it of heart. Sincerely speaking, it has not been released in your heart. But when the Holy Ghost breathes upon it, it does something to you. And that scripture comes alive. It's called an encounter. Occasionally, it may be backed up by visionary experiences to strengthen your conviction. But the end of encounters is that you get to a point of persuasion, unbending resolve. Persuasion about the possibility of God as far as that matter is concerned are we blessed second timothy please chapter 1 and verse 12 let's look at second timothy 1 verse 12 the b part second timothy chapter 1 and verse 12 the b part says for i know whom i have believed everybody say i know whom i have believed now you went to school understand that construction it didn't say i have believed uh -uh. i know whom so it's talking about a person first i had an encounter and that encounter caused me to believe that person and everything that proceeds from him are we together now and then he says and i am persuaded that he that person i've had an encounter with is able 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 an understanding of a man's ability an understanding of God's ability I have had an encounter with him I have had an encounter with his word so when I read and he says they shall lay hands on the sick it's not just story it's not just religion this is the foundation of true Bible faith so there are no options in it again you know that it is within his power to change my situation you don't say well lord i will try you let me hope that you will work today if you don't work no 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 there is a level a level of resilience you see the depth of your encounter determines the strength of your convictions the depth of your encounter determines the strength of your convictions it's obvious from the way we live and act as believers that there is a void there is a lapse in conviction and this is a product of um, the haze that is around our encounters with the Word of God not the reading of it not the memory of it but that there is a gap it is obvious if I look at this gentleman right now and I tell you do you know you are sitting on the ground he's not going to pray about it he knows he's sitting on a seat. Are we together? He's had an encounter with that seat. His, his, even his physical senses have, have responded to that reality. He knows he's sitting. No matter how I try to sway him, he has entered a dimension of resolve. He knows he's sitting on a seat. If I tell him this seat is going to break, he says, no, not just that I, I have seen the dimensions. I understand the strength of this seat. It can take my weight. Listen. God allows you to vet him and probe him until you find him worth your trust. God does not get angry when you ask him questions that lead to your faith being strengthened. Uh -uh. Mary said, how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man? And the angel took out time to explain. This is how it will happen. Gideon said, Lord, you are sending me to go and fight the Midianites. I need to stand with conviction. I know those guys. They are fierce. And so is it okay if I ask for a sign? 
it is powerful to stay with God until you are convinced I know that there are people here pastors who have come from several places let me challenge you do not make boastful statements until they come from the strength of an encounter it will destroy your life you will destroy your ministry you will lack explanations you will schedule a season of untold suspicion in your life i always say never stand before pharaoh until you have seen the burning bush say encounters bible faith starts with encounters encounters produce convictions convictions now allow you to act and take steps it is that step that is called faith hello believing is not faith believing is part of the process that leads to faith faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his word that's faith until action is taken there is no faith are we together now I've always given this example um, let me use you John hold on I'm going to stand there stand there just stand there I'm going to call John I want you to answer me but don't come is that all right John come say I'm coming has he come so as far as I'm concerned, you have not obeyed me because this should be the reward for your obedience. Now, you have answered that you are coming, but you have not come. I interpret your not coming as a sign that you, you are expressing concern about my reliability. You are wondering if I really have this. But if I say, John, come and you come, come. That step of faith puts pressure on my integrity. If I am joking, I better found a way of correcting it. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 4, listen. The Bible says that one time they were going at the hour of prayer. And then the Bible says that they saw a man who was crippled. Now, they were not stupid. That man was crippled. If you've seen a crippled man, you know that there are no strength in his limbs. Even if he stands, you know that he would take the grace of God. And then the Bible says that he was calling on them to give him arms. And then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. He said, but such as I have. Listen, I give unto you. He says, in the name of Jesus, I come under an authority. I represent a government and I invoke the power that backs that government. And I ask you, if you believe, stand. The Bible says the man was still looking at them. Now, I hope you know the Holy Ghost was already hovering with all his possibilities, but at the mercy of a man who has not manifested faith. And then the Bible says Peter had to help him. Hold my hands. The Bible says Peter held his hands and he leaping, leaping. The power is released at the point of action. It is the action that makes it faith. Not the determination to act. The determination to act helps you to eventually manifest faith. But the faith is only when action is taken. He leaping stood. He leaping stood. He would have remained there forever. He leaping stood. Are we together now? Yes. So when, when, when you hear the word of God, you see this is why the dispensing of the word of God is so important. Because faith is based on a basis. And the basis is not good word. The basis is not good intention. A nice positive statement cannot give you faith. It does not have the capacity to release that. God is only committed to backing what is his word. Are we together now? If it is not consistent with his character and it is not his word, there is no platform. You may act, but you are not acting upon the word. You are acting upon an information. So the word of God comes. And then you hear that word listen like you are hearing right now and you believe and the holy ghost helps your own belief he supplies to you that grace and that enablement number one to consider that god is able it is within his power to create scenarios around your mind and your spirit that strengthens your conviction he can remind you 
and say lest you doubt have you forgotten that january this year something was about to happen and all of these anchors together to build your faith because a response will be needed shortly from you and that response must be on its on the standpoint of conviction everybody say conviction how do you look at someone who is barren and tell the person go it takes a while for pregnancy to show and that woman believes it's not when she meets with her husband that she gets pregnant no the husband only gives the word manifestation right and she leaves or you have seen someone like some of you are sick now and then when it's time to say be healed all of a sudden how do you explain someone having a lump or a growth or a cancer and at the speed a fraction of a second is gone brothers and sisters that's what faith does i want you to believe this the bible says this is the victory this is the system where we believers command victory as an experience by engaging their encounters produce persuasion lord you are not a joker lord you believe I, I believe you your word is true your word is real you are you are not trying to flatter me you gave jesus christ that would not be a joke on the cross and on the strength of that lord i am willing to act listen the final step is action but not blind action it has to be the action required by god this is where we miss it again are we together confession is a generic action that ought, it is the manifestation of the spirit of faith the bible says we having the same spirit of faith as it is written i believe and therefore i speak so we believe and therefore we speak are we together speaking is a generic action but there are many possibilities we want to produce in our lives that require actions that must be added in addition to speaking for instance the action that is required for your heavens to be open is that you bring before the Lord your tithe. Are we together now? No matter how much you confess your heavens opening, you must take that action. And if you take that action not believing, you just dropped money. You drop 10% of an amount. It's not a charm. The power is released through understanding. I am coming because I have an understanding. I have a comprehension of what I am doing. And Lord, I thank you because you are my high priest standing in heaven. Hebrews 7 and verse 8, the Bible says, Here on earth men gave tithes, but in heaven he received them. Talking about the system with which God performs that function of his office that is in the order of Melchizedek. Right? Like he received the tithe of Abraham and spoke a blessing upon Abraham. So he, our Melchizedek, our high priest, receives that tithe and authorizes that the heavens be open and that the blessing is activated on our lives. But that will never happen just by dropping money. It's not about the money. There is an understanding. So your tithing is the specific action that is tied to that open heavens. Are we together now? you pray and fast it is spiritual but it will not replace the action wherewith that result was tied to so it is important that we have understanding to know what action has been defined by god's wisdom that is tied to the outcome we desire are we together one time jesus prayed for someone who was blind and the bible says in this case he spat on the ground and then made sputum out of it and put it in his eyes and said go wash at the pool called Siloam that is sent now that was the action if that man turned and started praising God and danced there for one day he would never be open he would, the eyes would not be open he was taking action but the action was not the one required are we together now Mary understood this and said whatever he tells you to do do not whatever you think he wants to be done so it is important that you find out what is the system of this partnership as far as this is concerned i want multiplication i want increase is it a possibility in god yes it is now i believe it but what is the system tied what does god require that a man do as a symbol of his partnership with him to actualize that dimension of reality 
we must find out so when we search scripture we are not just trying to know we are finding our place of partnership in scripture when you find it then you rejoice because you have found the key to committing god this that action is what we call faith and the bible says it is the victory that overcomes hmm. the victory that overcomes so what is the key to your healing the bible says they came to hear and to be healed there is no healing when the word does not come for that and when the word of god comes the power of god is present to heal and then the word comes but when the word comes it does not heal you automatically the word comes and somewhere along the line it produces conviction after conviction the word will compel obedience either through an instruction or whatever it is there are conditions for reception when you come for a meeting like this there is a condition to receive number one is to believe in the lord number two is to believe the vessel he will use believing the lord alone will not give you a miracle no sir it will always come from god through men to you are we together Jesus went to certain cities and the Bible says he could not do mighty works. That was not the limitation of his power. It was not the limitation of his spirit. But the inaccurate understanding of the people to create an alignment that can afford him to move in the dimension that they desire. Tonight, listen. Ladies and gentlemen, God did not gather us here to waste our time. It is within his power to change our lives. It is within his power to wipe our tears. Are we together now seated here tonight are people who truly truly require all kinds of miracles there are people here to resuscitate their spiritual life it's like it's like it's like a man in icu a lot has gone haywire the prayer life spiritual life and you're trusting god that there be a true encounter that refires your love for god you must understand the object of your desire and you must understand the system that helps you achieve that miracle there are people here tonight in response to delay and stagnation nothing seems to work nothing it is a bit comforting if other doors open and others are closed it will inspire you to trust that others but it's a terrible thing when all doors in your life close family closed finances closed your body everything closed there are people here because of an acute state of limitation invisible barriers around your life limitation is not retardation limitation is that a a mark has been created that you cannot cross so you rise and you get to a certain place and there is something that pegs you at that level and you never rise i watch it all the time pastors leaders business people individuals helplessly limited sincere but they are limited tonight the god i serve will take that limit away there are people here with sicknesses diseases infirmities real sicknesses probably with death sentences from different medical hospitals and um, maybe they've told you you have a few months to live you have a few weeks to live now and of course we have a lot of doctors here i respect their opinion that's their opinion is their educated opinion but tonight whose report will you believe i believe in jesus I believe in his words there are people here with all kinds of marital and family issues husband is about to go wife is about to go children are haywire and they are trusting Lord would you give us order of course it is within his power to bring sanity and order I mentioned these things to build your faith to help you know that your situation is within the scope of God's understanding and he can deal with it because sometimes we stay so long 
in the decadence of our situations that we wonder if God is aware that such a thing can happen to men let me tell you the God we serve is all knowing all knowing and it is within his power to solve that problem tonight there are people here with all kinds of barrenness all kinds biological barrenness and all sorts of unfruitfulness in different areas probably trusting God for children and all of that I came back from Abuja um, in the course of the week and um, when I went there I was I was counseling a few people and then I saw a young lady I think a, a couple or so I can't remember exactly and they were excited the last time I was there the woman the lady had been they'd been trusting God for a child all kinds of funny medical reports you know she had something in her womb her tubes I don't know what what they gave all kinds of stories and there she had given birth you know to a very bouncing healthy a child and she was telling me the news and laughing listen be careful what you believe it is within your power to choose what you believe nothing forces itself on you you can choose this is a wonderful thing this is a fact but i choose to reject it it's a choice anything that is not consistent with the counsel of god it is within your power to choose to reject it are we together there are people here under all kinds of academic and career challenges no job no lifting all kinds of strange occurrences that are not consistent with god's desire how about demonic patterns mysterious occurrences in the lives of people patterns that you cannot account for god wants to step in there are people here and I believe this probably affects a lot of people, especially with the recession. The reality of lack and poverty. Lord, what is the way out? Lord, what is the way out? I can't keep struggling from hand to mouth. We've shared extensively. There are all kinds of teachings about the economic system of the kingdom. And I would plead that you get those teachings. They are free. Because when it comes to prosperity, the gospel has to be taught. There is an understanding that must be built in your mind. Now God can give you breakthrough as a communication of his might and mercy. But you are never established financially through breakthrough. It will take an understanding to build a system that lifts you out of the realm and the grip of poverty forever. Say amen. amen. There are people here trusting God for direction. You have come confused not knowing what to do. You thought you had God but right now you are in the middle of total confusion and God must speak for you. I want to welcome you because in his presence there is direction. And finally, all of these are lists that the spirit of God was just writing out for me as I, I mean just stating out as I, I, I wrote them out. And lastly, there are people here trusting God for very strong impartations. What is an impartation? A transference of possibilities. Transference of possibilities. Impartation is as real as the chair you are sitting on. You can transfer possibilities. Possibilities also come with the alignment that makes those dimensions of the anointing function freely transference of possibility see the thing with the anointing is if it is there it is there if it is not there it is not there it's as simple as that if you are not sure it is not there it's like a woman who is pregnant for a while she may doubt if she's pregnant or not but the time comes it becomes very clear very obvious regardless of where your request falls in this i want you to know that the god of heaven who has gathered us tonight will visit you and give you testimonies it's going to be a very quick walk tonight the Lord is going to be healing the sick the Lord is going to be setting the captives free and like I told us last week it is also an anointing service and I don't I don't do anointing services carelessly but there are instructions that God gave me the anointing oil that will be used tonight the Lord asked me it's been with me since uh, I think yesterday I prayed with it all through until um, it was only this morning while I was coming that I carried it and brought it. There is a heavy grace. Oil does not anoint. The oil has to be anointed itself by a, a vessel who is anointed. Nothing is anointed on its own. It has to be anointed to become a platform. Are we together now? Tonight, what is your responsibility? Be convicted. Be persuaded that God is able. 
all that has happened before now the prayers the testimonies and all of that is to build your faith some of you are coming here for the first time you've heard about the miracles many of you have a cynical attitude of doubting men of god everybody you see walking in unusual dimensions of the anointing we have joined naysayers around town to think everybody is fake everybody is a devil everybody is using charm you know i humorously said it last week uh, even if you use charm the condition to carry the kind of power you see even through a charm is a condition that you have to think twice people just say it as if you just collect a charm and put it in your pocket no sir god gave gifts to men the gifts are not talents the gifts are people he anointed people by his predetermined counsel so that they can be platforms to be able to communicate his possibilities to people I'm honored every time I have the opportunity to minister. There are people streaming from all over the world with different issues. Several nations, at least 47 or so nations of the world, if I'm not mistaken, connecting. And God cannot be joking. He's not playing games with us. Are we together? Everybody say, I believe. Say, Lord, tonight I believe you. I know you are able. And I trust you to step in. In the name of Jesus. It will be for you like day and night. Just all of a sudden. You will find out. That that door that has been closed. Maybe forever. Listen. It doesn't take time. Time is not in the equation. I've taught you this. Time is never in the equation. The anointing of the spirit is not a suggestion. The anointing of the spirit is God's possibility at work in men that causes men to manifest results they were not born with. Are we together now? We are talking about a dimension that is superior to any intelligence of men. This is not some kind of superior science. This is not superior spiritism. We are talking of God showing up in the scene, standing face to face with a man's barrier. Hallelujah. I want you to be angry tonight and insist. Thank you. And say, Lord, that door must be open. I was so touched and blessed during the prayer session. Have you experienced the reality of triumph? I mean, there are people here who, whose testimonies have been tearsome. Tonight, you can activate something that will make your six to eight hours spent here to be worth the while that you get up in the morning and within three days one door opens another door opens another dimension of encounter all of a sudden hunger all of a sudden you step back to your church and fire on the altar i mean just by stepping and people are rising up from wheelchairs and miracles signs and wonders you bless people you shake someone's hand and all through that day a door opens you introduce something i believe it i believe it the lord wants to turn you to literally be supernatural supernatural not just in this blind talk of supernatural that does not produce results literally that your life becomes a testament that they would look at you like they did Paul and Barnabas and they call them Zeus and Hermes, Greek gods because they, they discerned that this level of result cannot happen with men listen, believe it believe it brothers and sisters yokes are breakable causes are destroyable limitations are breakable are you hearing what I'm saying? sicknesses are healable anointings are impartable there is nothing that you desire don't make it look as though god is mising his power no he is able to stretch his hands and do mighty things but you must believe tonight we love ourselves but everybody is going to have to stand and contend and say lord i have seen a dimension of your grace but i must step into it lord i have seen a dimension of breakthrough and favor but it's not yet a reality in my life. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. 
every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor surround. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor surround. Hold on. You overcome. You know why I started singing that song? I saw a crown. That's why I started singing it. Listen, you see, the way the Spirit of God works is that He reveals the dimension of God that He wants to make manifest in the midst of the people. Are we together now? That's why I raised that song. You need to learn how to partner with the supernatural. He shows you like a luring. This is the dimension. It's up to you to respond. Yeah, Lord, we receive the Spirit and the Bride telling the word to come. The word has revealed his intention so the spirit communicates to the bride and the bride in partnership with the spirit says come come lord jesus come miracles come breakthroughs come deliverances come open doors come speed come speed loose chains loose bands god is a mighty god do not allow your situations diminish the power of god it doesn't take time the level of grace it takes to produce your results is available mm. it's available i've taught you that there are three dimensions for reception in the spirit number one is through encounters when you have an encounter something is deposited into you number two by obedience to principles there is a dimension of god's power that is deposited in principles whether a believer or a non-believer whoever activates those principles that dimension of his power is released immediately like the power of seed time and harvest is not for christians a dimension of god's power was encapsulated in that principle but the third dimension of reception is alignment through a man's covenant with god men have covenant with god not old and new their dealings with god have brought them to a point where god has vowed a vow on their behalf and you can stand upon the platform of their dealings with god and receive realities that your faith level cannot afford every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victors around you overcome you overcome Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor surround. You overcome. You overcome. Let me tell you something that happened yesterday. I didn't plan to share it, but but something happened. I was sleeping, and I had a dream. I thought it was a dream. Yesterday, now, while I was sleeping, I had a dream. And then because I had kept the jar of oil and I opened the cover and then I had a dream now you know I don't share so much of my encounters because there are all kinds of cynical people and I had the, a dream and then the Lord was telling me you know I should how I'm going to pray on the oil that later on we used to minister to you and then something strange happened I just opened my eyes and there was an angel standing at the door my door now now those those experiences are not strange to me you know but this was very unique he stood there and i looked and oil started coming out of my hand and the lord says i should put my hand on this jar this jar and i tell you i was surprised it would almost be maybe the quarter the size of a cup i just put my hand there and i was just praying in the spirit that was the instruction that god gave me gave me that instruction that's why i told you oil does not anoint there is an encounter there is an encounter are we together now there is an encounter and when it began to happen i was i was i was well i wasn't surprised but then when everything was done the angel never even said anything just at my door just stood there and was watching and when it was time i noticed of course my hands were still wet but it didn't seem to be flowing and that was it whether he went through the door went up i don't even know how he left and that was the end of it right from the time you know my boys that come to work for me i started sensing that there were going to be visitations of the spirit and i was hurrying up to dismiss them as soon as they left i just locked the door and i sat down and boom my room was full of god's presence and all of that and, and i i when i sat down my eyes were open and all of a sudden i saw gates 
gates opening like gates very strange gates opening but then I knew that God by that vision was telling me what among other things would happen in the meeting but most importantly what the anointing would do listen ladies and gentlemen the Lord will bring breakthroughs in your life today that will surprise you you believe that rise up on your feet I want you to lift up your voice and pray one minute you say father I'm set for your visitation my faith is alive and I believe you lift your voice and pray my faith is alive I believe you Jabrandos Katapracatalados Encreto Catala Brande Secata Pracatala Badas Jabrete Cate Proscodo Brandi Gedibalas Jabrendes Caria da Balara Balarabos Mambroto Sodo Pracata Barada Balada Baladas Lord, we receive. We receive. Hallelujah. We're going to be very fast. Tonight is a vigil. I know that, in fact, you can't believe how far time has gone. But I trust God for grace tonight. I want to see how God will grant me grace. And I'll be able to come out to all the overflows. All the overflows. One, two, three. By the grace of God. And He will grant us grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Please bring the three people now that the power of God comes. I'm seeing an angel walking and touching three people in here, all inside here now. Will you open up the gate? Yeah. Open up the door. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. 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 Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm going to pray for breakthrough now. Such a strange grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. There are people here who have been tied. It's time to release that grace for breakthrough. And I want you to bring them out. Please don't stop playing. Please, guys. We know she's only. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare. Right now, at the count of three, let that breakthrough anointing right now begin to touch and change the lives of people. One. Two, three, take that breakthrough now. Take that breakthrough now. Bring them out. Shapatakata. Step into that dimension. Shake it, take it, take it, folks. Right at the back. I see the angels of the Lord bringing people into strange levels of breakthrough. Breakthrough. Shapatos kelataria. Mente kotos shotos e prekete kaya. No limitation in the name of the Lord Jesus. Breakthroughs. 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 By the power of the Holy Ghost. Breakthroughs. Shapos katala tosia. E prekete ketos. Shakatos setash. Never be the same. Never be the same. Lift your hands. I see a key hanging in the realm of the spirit. This is access. There are men right now. You are entering into dimensions of possibilities.
lift your hands at the count of three i want you to shout jesus this is a baptism keys that's what i'm seeing i'm seeing a bunch of keys lord jesus for your glory let the closed door open at the count of three one two three the name that is above all names access in the realm of the spirit I command access right now by the power of the Holy Ghost access to dimensions access to levels access to possibilities close doors opening the Lord showed me gates and I decree those gates are opening 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 in the name of Jesus those gates are opening no power stands against you tonight where the Spirit of the Lord is there is liberty I decree and declare the opening of strange gates the opening of strange gates hallelujah hallelujah we are going to do a quick walk please clear this way for me there are two angels that stand before me now my left and my right and the Lord is asking me to pass round and come I will do that very quickly as I do that the Lord is going to be breaking chains and taking away limitations in the name of Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus miracles 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost supernatural miracles take them out in the name of jesus miracles in the name of jesus miracles 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 by the anointing of the holy ghost miracles in the name of jesus supernatural miracles i release you now i release you now i release you now I release you now. Step into anointings. Step into graces. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the Spirit of the Living God. There are chains I'm seeing on people's hands. Chains, 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 chains breaking now. Chains breaking now. Chains breaking now. Get ready, this road. I see chains, 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 chains. Let it break now. Let it break now in the name of Jesus. Let it break now, now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it break now in the name of Jesus. Supernatural miracles, chains breaking in the name of Jesus. Chains breaking in the name of Jesus. Chains breaking in the name of Jesus. Chains breaking. Chains breaking. Chains breaking, chains breaking, breaking, breaking. Shadow sotosh kalai, rakataka. Let it break now. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands here. I stretch my hands right now. Every chain, in the name of Jesus. This is a miracle service. I command that the chains are broken, 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 broken now, broken now. In the name of Jesus, broken, you can't stand it. That chain breaks now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. 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 I'm seeing the hand of the Lord, a wind of His Spirit coming here. Lord, what is happening here in the name of Jesus? Shebas kotos kaba embreke to shedele keta brata soto shopres keya ambrata ya. I'm seeing someone being taken out of a pit, out of a pit, out of a pit. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, out of a pit, I proclaim it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and I decree and declare. I decree and declare captivity ended. In the name of Jesus. 
Meka para tokotos, leke teka ta prakatos otos, empre teke teka ratos. I'm seeing a ring in someone's finger. That demonic ring lives now. That demonic ring lives now. I see it by the spirit. That demonic ring lives now. I curse it by the God of heaven. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I see rings, rings. I curse it by the God of heaven. I curse it in the name of Jesus. Ataparatoshi. Ente karato kotoba. Shekretoski labaya. Embreketo koshubreke. Can I go out? Those outside, I want you to get ready. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. The Lord is saying, I should stretch my hands here. This media place, in the name of Jesus. Those here, I want you to lift your hands. No matter where you are, no matter where you are, I want you to believe. As soon as I pass here, no matter what the issue is, the hand of God is about to touch you. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, let there be miracles. Now, I pass this road. Let there be miracles. Every strange spirit, now be gone, be gone, be gone now. In the name of Jesus, be gone now. Every strange spirit, the Lord Jesus is in this place. The Lord Jesus is in this place. I stretch my hands now. Over, 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 over. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Over now. In the name of Jesus. Now, now, now. In the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. Stand up. Stand up. In the name of Jesus. Hold the baby. Now, out of her. Jesus Christ, I command that devil, Madam, look at me, the Lord is bringing you breakthrough now, I'm seeing you crying and the Lord is saying in your tears, I'm coming to you, I know you are far but I will come to you, I stretch my hands now, in the name of Jesus, the anointing is touching some people here, I'm seeing like chains broken, chains broken, let it break right now, in the name of Jesus, out of him, in this young man be gone now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus out now out now out now out now be gone in the name of Jesus be gone in the name of Jesus be gone in the name of Jesus look at me my dear the Lord is saying I should tell you that your sins are over over in the name of Jesus. Over now, in the name of Jesus. Say, no matter where you are, no matter how far, I want you to connect by faith. Look at me. Delay over your family ends now. Ends now in the name of Jesus Christ. Clear and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. There is a spirit in this. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone here. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord standing. There's someone here God wants to. Now. Declare. Where is that person? I cause that spirit now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me come to this tent overflow now. Lift your hands all of you. Lift your hands all of you. Lift your hands. Now. Listen. The Lord is giving me an instruction. All of you are, I don't know what overflow is this. Four now. Three. Overflow. Three. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Something is going to happen right to the back. I'm seeing fire. One, two, three. Now. Now, now, now. Cause those spirits. I release breakthroughs now. In this overflow. In the name of Jesus. To the back. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. I'm seeing several of you inside pits. Come out now. Come now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shabrat, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is Ezekiel? Ezekiel. I'm hearing a name Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Hold on, be careful. Please be careful. Ezekiel. Hallelujah. Ezekiel. There is something God is touching you. The first four rows inside, inside the main building, first four rows. There's someone right now. The power of God is touching. First four rows inside. Lord, thank you. Let, let that person be touched now. Now, first four rows inside. God is bringing deliverance. Where is Ezekiel? Who is Ibo? You are the Ibo. Come. Where are you from? Huh? Okay. Anambra State. I want to pray for you. You believe that the Lord is going to. I see a lot of witchcraft in your family. And the Lord wants to set you free. Please, those of you outside, I don't, don't think because you are outside, came out to show you that God is serious about your case. Don't think because you are standing, it means you are missing. No. Wherever you are, God can locate you. Are we together now? Salome, Salome, who is Salome? Someone outside here, Salome. I'm standing close to you. Salome, come, stand here. In the name of Jesus, I set you free and I set your family free right now. In the name of Jesus, hold on. It's two guys, lift your hands. Two of you. An anointing is coming on two of you now. Lift your hands. These two gentlemen pray. Father, let them take of that anointing now. Drink of that grace. Drink of that fire. Step into a new dimension now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are Salome. In the name of Jesus. Zonkua. Who is from Zonkua here? Zonkua or something. I'm hearing the Lord is asking me. We have a lot to do. We are going to be very fast because we'll soon pray for the sick now. Zonkua. Hallelujah. Please don't, don't make this place rowdy. Where are you from? Hold on. Don't, don't cry. Don't cry. Are you sisters? You are sisters. There is a spirit of death in your family. Come. What, why are you crying? It's well. Things are not going. Everything is scattered. Okay, look at me. Look at me. Two of you. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. One to go. That's the end of it. Lord, I set them free. Help them under the anointing. Please, there is somebody. The spirit of the Lord is ministering to me. I don't know what God is people outside. There is somebody around here. Want to prophesy to the person. Bring the person. That's the person. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm seeing a snake. God. My God. I'm seeing a, not Not this person. I'm seeing a snake. And the Lord is saying, even the lawful captives. That's what the Spirit of God is ministering to me. Please lift your hands, those of you here. Someone has got to be free. I'm Lord, that person right now. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let the hand of God come upon that person right now. That person has to be free. Has to. Has to be free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, here it is, it's coming now. I see like light coming on someone right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I set you free now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I set you free. I'm ministering to people. Ah, is there a name like that? Kauna. Is it Kauna or Kauna? Please to pray fast. Kauna. Who is that? I'm, I'm going to this overflow now. Kauna. Is there someone like that? Please, I want you to open your mouth and say, Lord, I receive the breakthrough you are bringing. Lift your voice and begin to speak it. I receive it. I receive it. Oga, come. What do you do? Huh? Where? Do you do business? Why? I want to pray for you. Because I'm seeing God empowering you in business.
you have an elder sister? I've seen a lady. This is a lady looking just like you. I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus. I took out time because of the massive deliverance that will happen here now. This very room. I'm walking here. Please hear me. There are mothers who what is going to happen to your children is going to come from your standing here now. So please release your faith. I want to pray. I want to pray for you. It ends. It's over now. In the name of Jesus, it's over by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'll walk it to the front and then I'll come down. Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to start from the front there. Please just allow me to do my thing. Let's just do it very fast because we're going to pray for the sick. All these people lying shortly. I'm going to ask all of you to sit down. That anybody on a wheelchair or on a your stand up right now. When I ask you to stand, you will stand up and take away whatever you came with. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hold on. Um, my God, I'm going to pass, and there is nothing special about me. It's just a communication, a channel. For the Lord to touch you. Come. Um, the man. What is you are holding? The Lord is saying, what are you looking for? You are looking for a job. Huh? And the Lord is saying, I should release a job to your life. You believe that? Receive your job now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands. Father, I pray. Spirit of the living God. That you will blow upon this place as i pass this place let no yoke let no chain stand in the name of jesus them now in the name of jesus i bring you life by the power of the spirit the life of the life of god by the power of the spirit lives life right now in the name of jesus christ Every darkness leaves. Every trace of darkness leaves. Leaves, leaves, leaves. Leaves, leaves now. Leaves now. Now, now. Leaves now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every trace of darkness must go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It must go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. It must go now. It must go now. Someone with pile is being healed now. Somewhere here. Someone with pile is being healed now. Someone with pile, you're going to feel like fire going through your body. We'll pray for the sick shortly. Be healed now. Fire is on your head. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a yoke of delay here. This road. Somebody, somebody has to be free now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let that delay be broken by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let that delay be broken by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's to a new level. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is renewing, renewing, renewing. I hear renewal. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm standing in this row because the angel of the Lord is standing here. And he wants to touch somebody right now. In the name of Jesus, let it be over. Let it be over by the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now, Shate Sekotas Kalapratia Embrekete Please help them, my God. Shembrakatos Koto Pradisha La Pariata Kata Ekros Ketepo Shabre de Ketala Le Kreto Shekras Kada Barata Pash Embreketia. My sister, you are praying and I'm hearing your prayer. Come, you are telling the Lord to visit you. I'm hearing your prayers in my ears, and the Lord is saying I should. That he should give you a visitation. Who is this? My children. This is your husband? Yes, sir. Where is he? He's in Berlin. I want to pray for you. I don't like what I see. Right? The Lord is going to set them free because I've seen everything is tied down for this family. Nothing is working. Yes, sir. Is that true? The Lord is going to step in now. At those states. Edo State. I'm from Edo State. But the Spirit of God is showing me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying for you. Please. Father, let there be a miracle right now. 
I end it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I end it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. My God. Now, see this thing the Lord shows me all the time. Please, everybody lift your hands inside or outside. Lift your hands now. I'm seeing a map. I don't know why God always shows me this. I'm seeing a map and the spirit of the Lord through that map is taking me to Benway State. Now, everyone from Benway State, get ready. The anointing of God comes upon you now. Benway State. Benway State. The Lord is setting people free. Benway State right now. Shekatos, Kalatos, inside and outside, Benway State, Benway State, inside, outside, Benway State, I see breakthroughs coming, Benway State, anointings, Mata Lakota, is a sign and a wonder that the Lord does, where he locates people by states, locates people by states, I'm praying now, if you're in Benway State, this unction is on you, the work is on you, inside, my God, I'm seeing people inside, inside the main auditorium, Breakthroughs, breakthroughs, breakthroughs. I'm hearing or to go or to go breakthroughs, strange breakthroughs, strange breakthroughs or to go. Shakato sekete, ekreto shala mariata, embrakato shataya la kosata. Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. There are miracles in the name of Jesus. There are breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jacob. Jacob. Jacob, you're, I'm standing close to you. And your name is Jacob. Lift your hands. It's over now. Forever over in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the there's somebody praying in this room the power of God is coming on him now someone is praying a prayer in the name of Jesus you are stepping into a level the spirit of wisdom is coming upon you in the name of Jesus Christ is it Asabe Asabe I'm hearing the name Asabe Quickly, I want to see how God will grant us grace this evening. There are so many sick people we have to pray for. Asabe, is it Asabe? I'm hearing Asabe in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me, my dear. Look at my eyes. My eyes. Look at my eyes. Break every chain. Break every chain. Visit our family, oh God, once and for all. Let this be the season. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is from Enugu State? Enugu State. Hold on, hold on. Please don't fight yourselves. Madam, where are you from? I'm from Eni. Enugu State. I'm going to pray for you. Choma. What? Is Choma. 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 I'm hearing a name Choma. We're going to pray. Choma, you are inside. The Choma, at the main auditorium. Choma, where are you? Give Jesus praise. I'm going to pray for you. Your name is Choma. What's your name? Choma. Your name is Choma. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is set family free right now because this is one of your prayer requests. I'm looking at your prayer request in a vision. What did you say the Lord should? I'm seeing your prayer request on top of you and I'm seeing that you're writing that God should bring breakthrough for your family. He will. He will. He will. We're talking about the spirit of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, let it be over. My brother, stand up. Look at me. Your relationship with the Lord Jesus. Look at me. You love Jesus? I'm seeing your legs tied and I'm seeing snake of your legs down to your head. Your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is where this will start from. Be free now. Out! In the name of Jesus, help him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where did you come from, my dear? You are from Isuka. In the name of Jesus Christ, hold my hands. Let it be over now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let it be over now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
I'm seeing that map again. The Lord shows me Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna now. The power of God is looking to Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna inside and outside. You're from Southern Kaduna. I'm seeing the map of Kaduna State. And the Lord is touching people from that state right now. There are several people inside, ushers, different people. The Lord is touching people, Southern Kaduna. Miracles, miracles. I'm seeing like a, a, the cover, the cover of a well being opened. In the name of Jesus, let it be by the Spirit of the Living God. By the Spirit of the Living God. By the Spirit of the Living God. Let it end now. I stretch my hands to you. Let it end. Captivity must end. In the name of Jesus Christ. Captivity must end now. Captivity must end. Captivity must end. Shada sete karotash. Embre kete shala pradosa subriada. Shala brinde keto prasada bananaba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hearing Italy, Italy, a country, Italy, who has a relative in Italy. You come. There is power. Please quickly. Who do you have in Italy? My elder sister. Where is she? She's in Italy. Have you heard from her? No, it has been long. There's a, there's a problem. I'm seeing that lady is in a serious problem. She needs a miracle. Did we discuss this with you? Yeah, she discussed it with my mom. I'm saying, did I discuss it with you? No, sir. She's in Italy. There is a serious problem. Huh? I'm seeing deportation. We have to pray for her. There is a serious issue. Not only deportation, but she's about to get into trouble. The Lord brings this thing so that he will set you free. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's what I was waiting for. In Jesus' name, there's somebody in front among the people lying down there. Um, I'm seeing the Lord touching their family. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle. Those of you coming for the first time, this is what happens in the miracle service. Is is these are not just miracles, they are called signs and wonders, they are operations of the spirit. You can see me call a state, and everybody on that, that state is under the influence of the spirit. It's not some magic. These are operations. These are superior dimensions of the operation of the Spirit of the living God. I want to pray for the lady in Italy. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a miracle right now. A miracle right now. Something is leaving you, even you who is standing. This has caused delay in your life. The Lord is about to give you speed. In the name of Jesus Christ, supernatural speed. The Lord ends captivity in your life. Let it end now. Captivity is ending by the Spirit and the power of God. Captivity is ending. Hallelujah. There is somebody inside here. I'm seeing a vision. You are a, you are a professional footballer. Come out. Something has tied you down. It's time for you to move up. Who is that? You are a footballer. That's why you came here. Who is that? Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. Lord Jesus, we honor you. Leave her. I want to pray for her. Something is happening. That's why I'm standing. Jesus, let this oppression over her family end. In the name of Jesus Christ, the same thing happening to her is happening to someone right at the back. In the name of Jesus, you play football. Oh, this is your brother. From where? Somebody cheated you. We have to pray for you. Huh? Where do you want to travel to? Huh? Europe. But you know that God has to take you to a clean way. Huh? If you want to smuggle your way and go to Europe, 
the devil would go and hijack your life and destroy you and they would throw you back. You understand? Because I see God lifting you in this career. The Lord is taking you very, very far. You believe that? Hold my hands. Lord Jesus, I bring him into this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be for you. You see, prophecy does not just reveal. Prophecy creates. We make things that have no business happening to happen. Are we together now? In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that the road is clear for you now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Seven months pregnant. There's a woman I need to pray for. Seven months pregnant. Seven months pregnant. Come. You are pregnant. How many months? Seven months. The Lord is telling me to take away CS. Hold my hands. Jesus. When are you due? Next month. September. You are due September. When? Do you know? You don't know. Anything from September 19th, get ready. Huh? In the name of Jesus, I hold you and I declare I stop CS now by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is a problem with this baby, as I'm seeing. Is that true? Yes. I told you. This baby is not lying correctly and it's affecting you. If we don't pray, something will happen and you give birth to a dead baby. We correct it now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you. I bring the life of Christ to you. In the name of Jesus, you will give birth normally by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for the sick now, but uh, who is this? You are pregnant. How many months? Seven months. Yes, sir. Have you gone to the hospital? Where is your husband? He's at home, sir. Husbands, husbands. They send their wives and stay back at home. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Put your hand on your stomach. God is going to give you a dream about the name of this child. Receive grace to name the child exactly what you see. Huh? Father, in the name of Jesus, let it be. In the name of Jesus, let it be by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it be by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it be by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We'll soon pray for the sick, but I want to do something. Look at me. This lady. Out of her now. I release the life of Jesus Christ and I curse the works of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ 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 I'm seeing fire it's like it's looking for someone in this room this is something that has to do with someone's family in the name of Jesus Christ just this room because I'm seeing the Lord is revealing to me in the name of Jesus thank you father the power of God will come upon whoever that person is and that will end it right now end it right now family God is touching the families in the name of Jesus it is not by power it's not by might it's by the Spirit of God it's not by power in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is showing me someone's prayer request. Prayer point number one. Let my sister have a child. Who is that? Prayer point number one. You are wearing red. Break every chain. Break every chain. I hope you are not telling lies. What was your first prayer request? Let my sister and my brother have a baby. Where are they? They are in their various places. Your sister, how long has she been married? going to three years. Did she have a child before? No, but my brother has. Did she take in before? No. Hmm. This person is wearing red. I will pray for you, but I'm seeing somebody wearing red. This is the person in the vision the Lord is showing me. Who is that? This is the person I saw, but I will pray with you. Listen, I want you to believe that no barren person, there is no need 
to go back without a child. It's, it's, there is not necessary. Hold on, I'm not just praying for barren people at random, but just let them come since they're here. We'll pray for people. We're about to pray for people now. We'll take our time to minister. The anointing is there. You see that even the vigils, sometimes you close your eyes and it's already morning. Praise the Lord. My friend, you love Jesus? Kai, please don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for somebody now. I'm seeing you standing and I want to pray. I know I always pray, but this guy smokes, uh, um, what they call that thing. But I know people smoke all kinds of things, but this guy, your own is acute. You are here, but truthfully speaking, you cannot help. You can take as much of that thing till it destroys you. I'm even seeing that you have some. I don't know whether it's at home. Please, who is that? Don't be embarrassed. The Lord wants to set you free. If you sit down, that's your, that's, that's for you. Whether you are inside, outside, make your way. Don't be ashamed. Just come out here. I want to pray for you now. My dear, I want you to call. Where are they? Who, who are you standing in for? Ladi Abuti. Huh? Ladi Abuti. You? No, You're the, my sister. Your sister. Okay, I want to pray. The person I'm talking about, please summon the courage to stand here. I want to pray for you. I want you to call her after this meeting and tell her to get ready. God is going to give her a baby boy. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you because your power is available to set the captives free. I decree and declare. Let it be right now. Establish it in Jesus' name. It's over now. You are the one who came. Come. We have to pray. Your brother, you said they are barren. I'm not seeing your brother barren. He, ha he has two children. How, how many two children? Hold well, on, let me talk to you. How many children? The first one was a miscarriage. Miscarriage? How many children are there now? The second one died like two weeks after. I'm seeing two children that is not a miscarriage. They were born, but they died. Two, two children. Now it's, there's no child at all. The one they had died like weeks or so. How many weeks? Two weeks, Two weeks after birth. One and one day. And he just died. We have to pray. You understand? You, you're standing in for them and you believe God will help them. We have to pray. As you're praying for them, it will never be part of your life. You have no business with that thing. Somebody needs to come out. This wee wee thing. Who is the person? Let's celebrate him. Don't, don't feel bad. Hallelujah. He's your friend. He's your brother. He smokes this thing. He smokes a... Uh, huh? Do you love Jesus? You love Jesus? Yes, sir. I have to pray for him. My friend, how are you? Can you hear me? I uh, can hear you. I have to pray for him. You see, the same thing, the anointing, when you smoke this thing and when you are under the influence of the anointing it's exactly what happens when you smoke these leaves you see those leaves there is a lady come and join him i'm seeing a lady don't be embarrassed please jesus is setting you free there is a lady you can't help yourself this is not the issue of being good or bad please run boldly and come if you waste our time you just sit where you are one lady there is a lady this thing has destroyed not like you like it but you can't help it it comes upon you like an anointing and you have to come my dear let's pray we have to pray for the sick now in the name of jesus christ i agree with you i terminate the yoke of barrenness right now sister and brother in the name of jesus they take in now you're here for the same reason you're here for the same reason in the name of jesus you're standing for yourself your sister if i ask for people who have who want children except you are standing for somebody if you are standing for yourself make sure you are you have a husband or a wife praise god we, we are bible believers but we are not stupid people make sure you are married officially because i know that there are people who just live together um you don't you don't love god and then we have to stay of course god is merciful the Spirit of God is not letting me rest over the lady that we are going to pray for. In the name of Jesus, let there be miracles. 
We're a family. Nobody looks down and embarrasses. There's no condemnation here whatsoever. We're here to help. We're here to show you the message of God. Hold my hands, my dear. This is a lady. Ah, no, this is not how. The person I'm talking about is here in this venue. You are here. You are not asleep. You are awake. You are hearing what I'm saying. This lady is... You understand? Barrenness. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch them. In the name of Jesus, touch them. Hold on. Don't worry. Uh, we are going to pray for the sick. Who is this? Why are you here, madam? Please just be patient. Why is she here? If it's not the case I mentioned, um, can I pray for you, my friend? You are the one who brought him. Where is he from? He's, he's from, staring he's at from me. Benway State, sir. Eh? He's from Benway State. He's from Benway State. See how the guy yes, is staring sir. at me? If he has his way, he can eat and swallow me as if it's easy. Between you and me, it's a long distance. It's not what you are saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very long distance stretch your hands and let's pray for this guy he's a nice person this this is what we we and co can do let's pray let's pray my friend don't worry we are praying for you eh? it's not just you stretch your hands saints of god you are anointed let's pray for him lord help this gentleman please i still insist this lady if god grants you grace in the name of jesus christ i pray for you we love you and in the name of jesus we pray for you sincerely by the compassion of the Christ, we pray for you that the power of this, this substance abuse is broken in your life. In the name of Jesus. Who is Rebecca? Rebecca. 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 I have to talk to that person quickly and then we will pray for the sick. You can't imagine how the time is gone. We are still going to anoint. It's already morning. Rebecca. Is there anyone? Huh? My sister. Your sister. I'll pray for you, but what's your name? What's your name? Rebecca. My dear. Who is this? Rebecca. The lady that smokes this thing. This thing has depressed this lady and changed her. That's why I want to pray for you. What's your name? Rukaya. 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 Come. I love you. Eh? Come. You're a darling. We're not, we're not here to make you feel bad at all. Listen, let me tell you something. Huh? One of the keys to walking in the anointing is love. You don't love people, you will never walk in authentic power. When God reveals to you things about people's lives, it's not because you are better than them. Are we together now? The goal of this revelation is to extend the hand of God's love. This is a wonderful lady. You can see very lovely, beautiful lady that the devil wants to destroy. So every time words come like this or when we pray for people, this is a family of faith where everybody is a product of God's mercy and grace. Are we together, darling? I, I know that you may not like some of them. It may not even be bad friends. They just got into all of these things. And let me tell you, maturity does not deliver people from spirits. You can be growing older and still remain. You believe the Lord Jesus will help you? Hmm? Thank you. You've tried to stop this thing, Abby? Yes. And you'll try and it won't work? Yes. Problems keep coming up that I just can't stop. What do you take? I smoke, I take drugs, I drink. You drink? Yes. Please stretch your hands over this lady. Pray as if you are praying for your own daughter. Pray as if you are praying for your own child. Lord, have mercy on this dear lady. We refuse to leave her to the devil. We love her. Pray, some of you are looking at me. Pray with all your heart. Lord, help this lady. Usually people take these things as a result of depression, all kinds of challenges, their lack of understanding the word of God, their lack of encounter with the word of God is what produces this kind of devilish effect. Hallelujah. Look at me, my dear. 
You are my friend, eh? Don't cry. You are my friend from today. God will help you, eh? Say amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, eh? Pastor Alpha, please, eh? You will follow up this lady. Just help her to stand strong. Some of these ladies, it's just a combination of loneliness and then they meet all kinds of bad people. By the way, when, when it's time to do the final prayer, we're going to pray against these bad people around our community whose lives is to frustrate and destroy people. There are many ladies here you want to love God and, and live for Him. But there are all these boys around that make it look like serving God is a waste of time. And they keep distracting you and before you know it, in the name of love, in the name of relationship, and, and in the name of wanting to marry you, they derail you from the path of God. Anybody who must make you leave God to marry you is not an irresponsible person. That prayer has already been answered. The answer is no. Leave the person quickly. Don't say I'm waiting on God. God is not a fool. Are we together? So go and meet Pastor Alpha. He will help you. Eh? He will collect your details. and Your Rebecca, all of you, three of you, I cannot even remember why I asked you to come out, but let me pray for you. You are standing in for your sister. You love Jesus. Friends, eh? You love Jesus, but be careful so that, um, you know, your company matters as much as your work with God. The Lord will help you. Huh? In Jesus' name. Over now in your life. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is setting her free. I'm seeing something leaving her. In the name of Jesus Lord, let her be free from it. That devil of darkness lets you go. Rebecca, the Lord is bringing you liberty in the name of Jesus. It's over now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I have to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, this favor is lifted from your life forever. In Jesus' name. Two of you are Rebecca. Your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, I agree with you. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you. Now, what's that a song? Gashina, Gamuna, Sir King Aljana, Yanana. Gamuna, Gashina, Gashina. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray on this now. You can imagine it's to five. Stretch your hands here. Let's pray. God is a miracle worker. The testimonies here is a revelation that God gave us and an instruction and my God what a joy to life stretch your hands in the name of Jesus Christ Jabratos Jabratos stretch your hands in the name of Jesus Mandala Kapratos Katafridish Kalabraniakata unto you that answers prayers shall all flesh come are you praying? Father, we agree. We agree for miracles. We agree for signs. We agree for wonders. Man tekalas kotambria tatosis yata kataloka rusia. Bredo go shobra diska labrata kataparadash. Le kataprando susibriata. E kata. Jabrata shebrega de bosh. Pray. We receive miracles, we receive signs, we receive wonders. In the name of Jesus, Lord, release miracles to families, release signs, wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ, let impossible situations come under the influence of your spirit. Shapra ka para koto sobri gedia. Raba daga da balada koso sobri ada balada bosh. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, we decree and declare. Agree with me. Right now, let every impossible situation 
turn into a miracle right now. Lord, this is a representation of the cries and the desires of your people scattered around this place and many across the nations of the world. Lord, we agree that you are a miracle worker and we decree and declare that these requests are turned into testimonies in the name of Jesus. We decree that these requests are turned into testimonies in the name of Jesus. We decree that these requests are turned into testimonies in the name of Jesus. We decree that these requests are turned into testimonies in the name of Jesus. We decree that these requests are turned into testimonies in the name of Jesus. Visit the barren, heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, wipe the tears of your people by the power of your word. Let there be miracles. We release miracles, 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 miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. We thank you. We call it done in the name of Jesus Christ. We call it done in the name of Jesus Christ. We call it done in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now we're getting to the last phase. We're going to pray on this. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something about this oil you are seeing. It's, it's truly an oil of wonder. I spent uh, the night praying. No oil in itself is anointed. Please be careful. Don't hurt her. Don't. Ah, uh, hold on. <laughs> they are wondering what to do with her. My dear, be comfortable, okay? This, your case, is a very straightforward demonic case. Your bones are fine. Everything is fine. You've taken this. Just relax. Um, if she doesn't feel the strength to stand on for her or you can just guide her who brought her how did she come you carried her can you carry her are you that strong this is night vigilo okay take her gradually you try to walk to where well, while they are carrying you please when you keep her exercise there's no reason out oh there there's no reason why this lady should go back crippled honestly speaking it's not that her bones are broken just all these demonic things so i was talking about this oil um there is a ritual when people begin to idolize things oil water handkerchiefs aprons um, um, stickers banners they lose the life in it religion is a very terrible thing it's important you do things according to the word of god and as directed by the holy spirit last week was an anointing service for favor and um, we're going to name this one now and then we'll pour it and then we'll have um, our anoint these guys and then we'll do it very quickly whilst we're doing that please the moment you come touch the anointing oil on your head please and please we'll make it very fast you can see that it's already five o'clock it's almost as if um, it was not a vigil <laughs> praise God father we give you all the praise I lift up this jar of oil and in the name of Jesus Christ we call it an oil of breakthrough say amen we decree and declare let this oil be a symbol of supernatural breakthrough the supernatural oil that came from my hands that was added to this I pray that the mystery of breakthrough that this represents as it comes upon you let there be strange signs and wonders in the name of jesus let this provoke angelic visitations in the name of jesus christ and let this cause the holy spirit to move in your life in a mighty way the bible says the spirit of the lord is upon me and the reason why he's upon me is because i was anointed in the name of Jesus, may the anointing attract dimensions of the operations of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we dedicate this. I command this oil to lose its earthly significance and to take on the significance of a mystery in the realm of the Spirit, representing breakthrough. At the same time, let this be an oil of judgment. In the name of Jesus Christ, let this be an oil of judgment by the power of the Holy Spirit. God's ability, God's ability is 
working in me. Hallelujah. We have to save time. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I'm anointing you so that you will stand and as I lay my hands, I pray that this grace of breakthrough and favor will start from you first. I want you to believe it. This is an oil that will bring supernatural breakthrough in your own life. Supernatural grace, supernatural grace, supernatural grace, anointing of the Holy Ghost in fresh dimensions. In the name of Jesus, that grace, that anointing, that grace, that anointing, that grace, that anointing, in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, so you can give it to them. Father, we decree and declare. This is an oil of supernatural breakthrough. I can always add. Please quickly station yourselves. We are going to be praying all through. As soon as, as soon as the oil touches you, please, I want you to begin to pray. Worship team, you give us. Uh, okay, just play the instruments. We'll just begin to pray in the spirit. Everyone praying in the spirit. As the oil comes upon you, begin to declare, speak forth release your faith lord we decree and declare right now let miracles begin let signs and wonders and breakthroughs begin in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus you can stand here okay thank you jesus go ahead as soon as you touch the oil begin to prophesy in the name of jesus christ I decree and declare the word of the Lord becomes my testimony. The oil is anointed. Mande brada scala brede shefre de seka to prada kata balada ba. Please quickly, quickly, quickly. Make sure everyone is anointed. Make sure everyone is anointed. Young, old. Zambra di kasu di brada balada bosh. Madi brasa zize anakushada cross kala ba. Please keep standing everybody. It's morning already. I want to make an altar call quickly. Our time is up. It's just two minutes to six. Please keep standing. No moving around inside, outside. There are people here. You have seen the power of God. You have seen the grace of God. And you're saying, Apostle, if you will pray for me, I'm ready to hand my life over to God like the dear lady who came out um, and many other people. I know that it is morning, but it should not rob you. The greatest miracle, literally and truthfully, is an encounter with the lord jesus christ wherever you are you are inside you are outside any of the overflows online you're following and you're saying man of god i want you to pray with me and at the same time there are people you have given your heart to the lord but things happen around your life your life went haywire and you need your sin I, I cannot go back the way i came I want to have this restoration, this encounter. I'm rededicating my life to Jesus. Wherever you are, please, we have just two minutes for you. Inside, outside, please clear the way for them. Make sure you don't discourage them. Let's appreciate them as they come. Wherever you are, God bless you. Make your way to the front. Are you appreciating them? They are coming. Please run, run quickly. Inside, outside. If you're coming, I want you to run. God bless you. God bless you. Clap hands for them. They are coming. God bless you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Keep coming. Don't let anyone stop you. If you are joining them, please come quickly. Clear the way for them. Overflow one, two, three, and then the fourth one. Those online connect with us. I'm about to lead them with a very special prayer. Very special prayer. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to lift your right hand and pray this after me sincerely from your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. That you are the son of God. Tonight. Come join them quickly. Tonight. You're coming from outside. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Join them. Join them. Let's be very fast. Let's be very fast. Quickly. Say after me all of you standing here. Say Lord Jesus. I believe in you. That you are the son of God. I ask you. To cleanse me. Forgive my sins. I believe you, you were raised from the dead. And now you are alive. I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare by the authority of scripture that I'm a child of God. I decree and declare that the grace to live a victorious life is given to me right now. I go forward ever 
and backward never in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted Jesus we present to you the ones you died for and we decree and declare that this will begin the beginning of a great journey in their lives I, I declare that your sins are forgiven I command that the power of sin the power of flesh the power of Satan is broken over your life in the name of Jesus you go from glory to glory in Jesus name I pray amen and amen now very quickly I want you there's a gentleman waving his hands I want you to follow him quickly they welcome you more warmly on our behalf and communicate a few details to you God bless you dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus I'll see you again bye